I mean, does, the, yeah, the meaning, oh, have the some... meaning to it is weak, but at least it's better than the Yamai sisters. Hello everyone, welcome to the Mad Lad and... Smiley Reacts. Mini of the Round Table Podcast! Yay! Yay! So, I know this came out of nowhere because we never really mentioned this like out of, like any other time we do our videos because you can say Oliver lately finished Day Alive not long ago, like I think two months ago? Yeah, about two months ago now. And then, you know, he asked, do you want to do a, a mini podcast talking about Day Alive? Because, you know, as you guys may know, I'm a hardcore day alive fan it pretty much can no you can no, you can just that's you can, hard to, you can, can't prove that no yeah no, you can tell it's, it's from my background you can tell <laughs> from my background look at my background right here fantastic background i got even got kurumi as my wall picture my iphone yeah hardcore fan here and obviously i i'm fine to, I, to be honest though because like as a hardcore fan i pretty much dive into uh, the lore of their life a lot during like my time during the time it aired the anime airs back in 2013 till now so i my knowledge around their life world is quite efficient but as you may, get, may know season four is coming up and oliver wants some to like discuss things regarding to their life before season four comes in and so here we are guys yes. so yeah i mean Obviously, I can't really say much because I pretty much know what to expect for the upcoming season and not just the upcoming season, season 5, season 6, because I, I even know how the Daylight franchise ended too. So, yeah. By the way, the, the Daylight franchise ended like two years ago. So, it was a, it was a sad times for many fans because, because you can say it's the time to say goodbye and move on to a new work. By the creator himself. Uh, you can so, also say at you can also say at the same time that because it's got the next season, season four coming up soon, it ha it's not officially goodbye yet because <laughs> you'll get to see everything animated <laughs> that you've been looking forward to seeing, like the fights, the whatever well, uh, whatever happens next. Depends on the studio. Depends on the studio. It all yeah, down. Right, yeah. It all down. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, we'll get to that. So yeah. But first, we're starting off. So okay. today hey, we're going to start off with the, of course, the first season, Day to Live, which aired originally in 2013. Oh, Oliver, Oliver, you want to tell them how this podcast is going to be structured out? Because I'm yeah. fine. All right. So yeah. All right. So what we're going to do today is because it's. It's a mini podcast, so we're going to probably like just quick fire our way through the three seasons and also the movie slash OVA that separates Dead Alive two and three. Um, but we're going to talk about pretty much you know our favorite characters, uh, maybe favorite season that sort of thing, and also maybe least favorite character. I would I was going to say maybe the our least favorite villain but we all know who that's going to be anyway so there's probably no point in actually talking about that part of the show so without further ado we'll jump straight into date alive let's go so you start off with season one what's your impression season one i think uh, overall maybe i think maybe the first couple of episodes it's again per usual when it comes to anime they don't really know how it's going to play out originally. Uh, like, they usually take a while to, you know, figure out, all right, this character, like, it's character building. So, you got, like, uh, you got our main character, uh, uh, Shido, who, you know, the usual cliche high school protagonist. I'll give you that. Uh, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give yeah. you that. Uh, but... The best thing about Shido, unlike other main protagonists, is that he actually d gets shit done. Because sometimes, you know, with other harem animes... It's persistent. Either, it's persistent. It's persistent. It's persistent. It's yes. persistent. So pretty much the... Sometimes the MC is like, oh, I, oh no, girls, I don't know how to interact with them and all that. No, no. Shido, sure, maybe starts off like that in like the, well, the first episode. But then he gets really badass later on, which is great. Um, probably, I think, out of the characters that are introduced in the first season that uh, I will say is probably like the weakest, but that's because it takes a while for it to actually grow, and that happens in part two, in season two, and that's uh, uh, Tuka. Tuka. 
Um, Toka. Yeah. Bec- but yeah, Toka. Uh, because I do think in season one, she's kind of annoying. I do remember not really liking her in season one. But what do you think, Mad Lad? What, do you agree with that statement about Toka not being the best in season one? Um, I will gladly disagree with the fact that you say, oh, she's annoying because, well, I mean, obviously her whole personality changed after like um, episode two, like when she met Shido, she, she opens up to Shido, she becomes such a, how to say, Sundere most of the time, or just like, yeah, being very, likely, very yes. high, high, high energy and stuff like that. To be honest though, I'm not a fan of that because like, I'm more of a fan of her, the more angrier, more stricter, more cautious personality like we saw for the first episode. I'm more of so for those sort of girls. Just like Toka, trust me, when when I say she's a badass, she is a badass. It's just oh, because yeah. she, it's just because she her personality doesn't like, because of her changing personality, her no of course the spirit power got sealed away too. That's why she wasn't as strong as we saw from season mm-hmm. episode one of the Yeah. So stuff that but trust me guys, Toka is really strong and she it's just the fact that she you know, she cannot really execute that sort of like um, fighting instinct like she have anymore, but it's just because she's used to this sort of like social life now. Because ever since her power got sealed away, her life becomes more vibrant and more outgoing. And although, happy, yeah, she's more happy afterwards uh, as well. Yeah, and you can say mm-hmm. I was like, um, fair play, I guess she did his part. But the thing about I, the thing that really not really make me fancy Toka is just that she's a bit too airheaded sometimes i mean she still acts like a normal girl that's the thing but do you realize that toka knowledge around the vocabularies and stuff like that is like baby knowledge yeah very baby knowledge yeah she uses like the same phrases like repeatedly over the course of the show until like she starts to learn a bit more about the world through shido and of course the other girls that come into the picture which we'll, which we'll get to. So I mean, I actually did this, then, Oliver. I didn't even ask you this. Um, has Toka ever, ever mentioned anything regarding to her past life? No, not yet. No. Uh, they no can't, kind, don't, don't, you, don't you find it strange that she never really brought it up like for the past three seasons? Good point, actually. That's a very good point. We, have, we barely know anything about Toka like, now, actually. Like, is she... Like, like, he, he, like you, need to, you need to insert this sort of idea in you when you're watching their life. Are all spirits human? Because, like, we saw from season two, right? Oh, should I say, even season yeah. one, Katori got turned to a spirit. Miku got turned to a spirit. Yes. And, of course, you know Origami turned to a spirit because of her... Yeah, Katsuyo. Origami, best girl. So, best girl, I've, I'm sorry. So yep. taking so taking those into your consider taking those like ideas. Yeah. yeah okay. Do you think Toka is a human? I don't think Toka is a human. I think she's a spirit. Like as in pure spirit or spirit that does not have memories of a past. Like like for the Yamai sisters. Mm. I guess it is possible that her memories have been erased, uh, and she doesn't know that she was originally human. Um, there is a possibility, especially. Again, later on in like uh, uh, season two, where her inver- inverted form, her inverted badass form comes into the picture. Yeah, that's like a very dark um, version of her that uh, like seems to know more about herself than the normal version of her. Like, don't she seems you, to know. Don't you find that actually strange though? That the inverted version of Toka seem to be more aware of her own being than the actual talker or something. Yeah, I do find, I say, I do because find like, that the really thing, Because the thing relaxing. is, the thing is in season three, you, what you realize from Origami is the fact that, you know, even if she in her inverted state, she still acts like herself. But when Toka yeah. inverted, she becomes a completely different person. So, so can't, don't you actually find that like, hmm, something's going on here. Yeah, there's definitely something happening there that we don't. And well, actually, I I, can, I don't know about I, yet, but uh, um, any, have, have you watched something there? Have yeah. you watched the anime um Rosario Vampire or something like that? 
Yes, yes, I have. I've also read the manga of it. Yeah, it's something similar. Zero to vampire. It's actually kind yeah. of, the concept of the the girl. Yeah, it's a very yeah yeah. It's a very similar concept actually. Yeah, yeah. The it's... idea of yeah. yeah, not not just because it's like a harem anime, mind you. When so, talking about Rosie or Vampire, just want to put it out there: manga is better than the anime, but that's because the anime doesn't actually follow the story at all. I really need to reread them. But that's neat. But that's neither manga. here nor there. But uh, yeah, the, yeah, the manga is a lot better. Anyway, who was, uh, what's the vampire girl name again? I forgot. Oh, I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, because her her situation is very similar to Toka's situation. Regarding to her yeah, other I side, can, I can see other side personality. I can definitely see. Oh, uh, uh, Mocha, Mocha, Mocha. So basically, yeah. if you just want to know, if you really want to know what the focus situation is, just think of Mocha from Rosario Vampire. Her focus situation is almost as similar as her situation regarding to her split personality yeah. when she inverted or turned to something else. So yeah, Toka though, like I said, I'm not entirely a fan of her outgoing personality even though she's very supportive now she's the main girl yes i know she's the main girl for the series she supports shido she yeah. always be there for shido she and but the thing is what's strange about toka is that that she does not was not really that aware of the fact of the concept of love in two season three yeah do you realize that that all this time she all she's yeah. been doing was just like being stick by shido's side and she just doesn't know why, why the reason why she's by Shido's side until she realized in season three. Mm. It took her a while, of course, but I was like, bro, girl. She got there in the end. Yeah. Bro, girl, yeah, she you, got there you're in, in love end, with yeah. Shido. Admit it already. Ugh, like, I was like, Toka, I know you've been supporting some of that, but can you realize the reason why you're supporting Shido all this time? So, I mean, I'm glad that Toka was there for Shido most of the time. Like, you know, for the Yoshino case, she helped him buy time. Uh, Kurumi, mm, Kurumi yeah. she. Kurumi, I mean, she didn't really do much, to be honest. Uh, Tokotori, she helped buy time again. Yeah, my sister, she yeah. helped buy time by, by fighting up the Baturis and of course gives Shido a word of wisdom. Miku, um, yeah, she supposed to help Shido out. So I can see where many people are, like Toka, that cuts up Toka personality, you know, in her character because you now she really was, she was always the one there for Shido. And that is like, I, oh, I, yes. I, I would definitely, from the very beginning, yeah. I would definitely give many people credit for that, for supporting Toka. And of course, you know, if you're into Toka's like outgoing personality or eating behavior and stuff like that, fair play, I guess. Hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I, 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 won't, I, won't, yeah. I won't lie though, I, I really like Toka's hair color. Like, not every day you see anime characters that has dark purple hair. Like, that is like, yeah, good point. Wow. Like, yeah. We, actually, I, I actually have Toka's figurine back in 2013. I went to sing. I flew to Singapore just to buy one. So I was a big, <laughs> I was a heavy supporter of Toka until I real until I found out, discovered Kurumi and her intention and stuff like yeah. that. I was like, okay, she's best girl. But yeah, yeah. I, but, but yeah, I can say, <laughs> but yeah, I can say Toka. I mean, obviously, like season one, we pretty much portrayed the fact that she's uh, going to be a heavy supporter of the character. In season four, mm. it doesn't change to be honest. Well, there is some as some scenes in season four that will allow us to really dive more into her character and her story and stuff like that. But I won't say much about that because like that is spoiler. Yeah. But Please. but in season one though, yeah, I mean I can I can see why one could somehow uh, turn uh, yeah turn right. some season, people off. Season one, season one is more about the character building aspect of the show because of course season one is us getting introduced to all these characters and there's to be fair play there's a lot of characters they need to introduce in season one so and they only have 12 episodes to do that but i think it's done really well because you get a bit of like they introduce a character they tell you their name that i'm sure they don't like inform us of the, their backstory or anything like that because that's going to come later but at the same time, like, you've also got, like, all these action scenes taking place and, like, Shido just trying to freaking survive. <laughs> like, not only the onslaught of, like, swords and bullets coming at him, but also the onslaught of all these girls as well who are, like, constantly, like, going for his at attention and love interest as well. So, you can't blame the guy for, like... Later on, again, part three, having like a breakdown and 
losing it <laughs> a little bit for the t- for yeah a little bit but yeah it's 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 a great it's the reason why it, I wish I got into this show sooner honestly because it, it's a lot of fun. Well, yeah, I got to say though, the season 1 pretty much tackles all the actual introduction, she does the character, what so what sort of enemies they expect to face and what the sort of like the main theme of their life is. Mm. So yeah, basically she yeah. she does see your spirit by kissing them and the whole the whole yeah. point of their life is to like which is uh, also save... a very unique I was going to say that's also a very unique uh thing because like the idea of you know kissing the girl to seal her powers i think that's been done like maybe uh, over the years like once or twice maybe i yeah, can't remember I mean, what sort of shows I mean, basically the, crea- uh, the creator in before the creator wants you to but, be a chat so that's all i can say you want him to be a chat just yeah. to go around kissing girls yeah oh dear. yeah and yeah also in season one, we get introduced to Origami, who is essentially at first, yeah, a villain. She is a, essentially oh, before a villain. We, before we get into Origami and stuff like that, uh, let me ask you this question. Why do you think she don't need to kiss out of all the things he could have done? Hmm. Why kiss? Probably because... Why kiss? Uh, yeah, connect like a connect. It's for I reckon it's because well there needs to be some sort of bond slash connection there. So like holding the girl's hand isn't going to do it. So I reckon uh, kissing like the girl is the way for the uh, powers to be uh, compressed. I guess is the, a good term for it and uh, sealed away because otherwise what else could he possibly do to seal like these girl's powers away because if he doesn't well those powers are going to explode and like kill them so there's i can't really think of any other way he could have gone about doing that he can he can Uh, he has other ways to do it to be honest like well he could kill them but he doesn't want to kill them no no that is not he's not killing them like in season four there is another way you can take spirit's power away but you'll see later but but yeah kiss but yeah Kissing is the most safest option to have a close to close um, bonding, of course, with the spirit. Bonding. But that's actually. Well, I guess uh, I guess the, the other way he can possibly do it is sleeping with them. But no, no, um, uh, no, 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 we're not going through that sort of territory, to be honest. <laughs> but but there is actually. Yeah, I don't think the, but, but, I don't think the writer would but, do that anyway. When I dis- oh. but when I like discovered the reason why she do had to kiss the spirit and stuff, I said, ah. Now that makes sense now, but again though that dive into spoiler territory, it all de- because all, yeah. it, because it gets it all down to it all leads mm-hmm. back to the mysterious thing called Phantom. Like we, you pretty much know already. Yes, uh, yes, I remember Phantom, that mysterious. Well, we'll say girl at the moment, um, who can pretty much disguise itself herself as like anyone, because I do remember. Like it disguised itself for a little bit as uh, his sister Katori, um, so we don't know what Phantom, and also we don't know what Phantom really wants. Like it's hinted at stuff, sure, especially around you know hinting around you know Shido's role in everything, but we really don't know anything about this Phantom character, except for as I said the few things that we've it's been hinted at but don't, don't yeah, you think that's another mystery that don't you think phantom could be working for someone else uh, maybe i don't know another it's possible another spirit it maybe? is possible it is possible that they it's working for another uh person um or another organization as well but we don't know yet uh hmm. it's probably a, there's probably another spirit that hasn't uh been introduced yet which will probably maybe happen four or five season four or five but that i can't really speculate on that yet so, because again so, i need more information on that before we get dive back to the origami yes uh, let me insert you a thought for season four or so say re- when you rewatch their life phantom yep. has always been close by than you think she is hmm. so keep that in mind she's Phantom has always been close by when, when whenever you watch their live. So like so like uh, in 
she's been like what happened she's in... been she's been watching all the moves what the organization is doing what like, the spirits are doing so that's what I let you guys know like what happened essentially like what happened in uh season three with um uh what's it i'll look it up again uh like, it's like of season three but like in season uh, like, like in like in season one how how do uh, how does she go about to introduce herself like how does she really expose herself and in season three how does she know origami is, is, is losing so like, yeah so put that put that makes me mind. because i actually think of what natsumi did because natsumi had the power to like watch what everyone was doing um but obviously it's not that's mm, i doubt natsumi is really you know uh phantom but the way you say that it makes me reminds me of natsumi's powers of the ability to like become anyone it, ha it, or has, it has nothing to watch do with everyone it has nothing to do with natsumi's power at all it has nothing to do with natsumi's okay. power it's that's what makes that's she, what makes me think of her powers yeah so just keep that in uh, mind that phantom has always been closer by than you think she is so when you watch their live again, just think about how do Phantom know what's going on here? Why does she take certain actions in this scene right here? So yep, I mean just insert I won't say much who Phantom is because yeah, when when I find out who Phantom yeah. when I found out trust me, when I found out who Phantom really was, I say, Oh. So she has always been this close by than you think she is. And so it was that, it was that tells me she's it was, somewhat it was so shock. It's so many anime only. That stuff. means it's somebody that we already know. Then it's yeah. somebody that's already I can, like I can agree. I can with, let you know that it's somebody who like if they're in the um in the ship, for example, Katori's ship in the air. It's somebody who's in that um in that ship with them, one of the crew members. I reckon. Hmm. Mm. That's, that's a guess, anyway. Hmm. Well, I mean. Obviously, obviously, it's not going to be. It's not going like if, it, if you. If, obviously, it's not going to be like someone like uh uh uh, Koku, uh how do you say it? Uh, Kokuri, uh the the one that's voiced by um by um the guy from Ray Zero. Um, what? How do you say his? I'm trying. Yeah, I'm just saying it's obviously not um. Where's Ray Zero? I'll look it up. Um, uh, who are you referring to? That's why I'm trying to look it up. Um, he's got that, you know, really distinct uh, voice. Um, Roswell. Roswell? Right? Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, you can say Phantom is almost like Roswell, but he's not. So, no, no, no. What I meant is like it's obviously out of the characters in the ship. It's not going to be him um, because he's so unique as already. Like, I guess the one well, of the ones that I can well, well, kind fun of fact see though, it fun being. Fact, fun, fun fact, though. Roswell character voice actor voices the same character as the one on the ship. Hazaki. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what that's what I'm getting at. Like, I couldn't remember the character's name mm. on the ship and i'm just saying like Kanzaki. that Kanzaki. Is, oh you're trying to remember Kanzaki. Kanzaki. Yeah. Kanzaki, yeah that's it the other one i kind of can honestly see it being honestly is uh uh rene um wait, wait, the wait. ship how do you die the ship's that? doctor well because one she's always she, thinking back she's always around when things are happening two She's still quite a mysterious character as well. Um, like, she even, like, shows up, like, just when something's either already happened or just about to happen, I've noticed as well. Now that you brought that up, I can totally see it being Rene. Again, I could be completely wrong with that, but... Who knows? Rene... Who knows? Rene is out of the characters there on the ship yeah Rene is the one that i can totally see it being because she cares about shido katori etc and yeah there's something a bit odd about that i will admit hmm 
But anyway. Mm. Then, of well, course, we've got... Again, before we get, I can't say much. Before we get to Origami, let's okay. uh, talk about... Um, okay. you know, I'm on the wrong page still. Let's talk about Yoshino, because she's the second one that was introduced out of the spirits. Um, very unique design on Yoshino. Very cute, very adorable. Uh, I like her fashion fascination with, uh, you know, food. Um, she deserves all the head pats. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I definitely do like Yoshino's design, and especially when she, I guess you could call it, get angry with the, uh, like, the massive bear or whatever it was that she uses to, you bear. know, in her fights. Bear? You mean rabbit, right? Not bear. Rabbit, right? Rabbit. Yeah, rabbit. Yeah, the rabbit. Um, Yoshinon. Yeah, the rabbit. Yoshinon. Yoshinon. Yeah. Yoshinon. Hermit. 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 Yoshinon. Yoshinon, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really... Her spirit, I really that, her, her, her. her spirit is that Q, by the way. Not, her, her is her code name. That Q is a power. That Q is a spirit power. Uh, okay. Uh, don't, right, don't, yeah. don't get confused with Zaf Q and that Q. I know it, you can mix up those two words easily. Zaf Q is my girl power, okay? So, just let you know. So, that Q. Zad. Cute. Yeah. Like how on Mal's page for her, like it lists like all her uh, abilities, <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. Spirit number, species, angel, weapons, etc. <laughs> I mean, if you don't know if why, you, they, if you, I don't know why they listed all that. If you really want to look up on uh, information regarding to um, Yoshino and like. Um, the rest of the girls, be careful though, because on we on any wiki page, there are assholes. Well, that's why I, well, I'm, not, I'm not going to go and find like the dead alive wiki page or something like that. I'm not going to do that. Um, there are spoilers, so careful when you want to look. Yeah, up I don't. I don't want to. Yeah, I really don't want to go into spoilers with, uh, especially a show that I enjoy so much as Dead Alive, uh, and ruin it for me. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, but actually, though, going back to Yoshino, uh, uh, what do, why do you think that she has a puppet? And you know, a puppet speaks for her, of course. But is that really Yoshino speaking? Do you think was actually? I don't. Th I don't think. No, that's definitely not Yoshino speaking. That is another, maybe another spirit that's possessing the rabbit. But maybe it has some. Maybe there's some sort of um, you know, connection between them, like. It's another, or maybe it's another part of her personality, like that Yoshino doesn't really maybe understand because she's like young. Yoshino, of, I know she's a Yoshino is a weird she's, character. She's a weird character. That's mm -hmm. why many people are like really, in, really attached to her because we, we can totally understand where Yoshino is coming from because like her situation regarding to her using the puppet to speak for her, speak for her is is the, almost like. Or she has a, a like alter ego to her personality that she's now aware yeah. of. Yeah, and also there was that point. I can't remember which season it was. I think it was either two or three, where the puppet, the rabbit puppet, and Yoshino are separated. Yet the puppet is still able to speak to Shido, and yet when later on when the puppet is returned to Yoshino, uh. They like she had no idea about that conversation the puppet and Shido had. Remember that? I do remember that. You mean season three? I right? swear that happened. You mean season three? Yeah, right? I said it was either I was either two or three. Yeah, um, yeah, season three then. But yeah, but I we do all, remember we, but, that but, as well, but we so. all know the reason why because Natsumi was possessing Yoshino, so Yoshino, so yeah, yeah. So mm, good point, actually. Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's right. So yeah, I mean, obviously Yoshino as a character is really um, intriguing. I would say for myself because no, she has a, she has the puppet speaks for her, but yet she, she does not say, "Oh, I'm not still one speaking." It's the puppet speaking. It's like her person, her alter ego personality just channel into the puppet. It's like the, another form of Zakio power allow her to do something like that. Also, also keep in mind that Yoshino is. Like fourteen years old, right? She seems fourteen. Yeah, she's fourteen. But trust me, yeah. her her actual age is a lot older than that. 
Mm, and most it, likely, it, it's yeah. Be, and it's because of the spirit power. Spirit power is like gives you immortality. It gives you like a chance to stay young forever. So, so, uh, so basically, a lot of people when you find out about Yoshino's actual age, he's legal. He's beyond legal. <laughs> he's beyond legal. Trust me. If you find out her actual age, you will be shocked as hell. I'm sure it will probably be brought up in like a future season anyway. Trust me, her, her, her she's beyond legal, man. So, um, <laughs> but anyhow, going back to Yoshino, um, yeah, I mean, obviously her power using ice, actually her power is actually manipulating water. We all thought it's ice, mm. it's, no, her power ice. is manipulating well, water. Technically, ice is water, it's just frozen water, so... So, you can, uh, so when I say water, you can go solid, liquid, vaporize it. Why do you think she controls the rain? Why do you think she always appears during the rain period? She controls the rain. Well, good thing she doesn't have, like, the ability to, like, control, like, say, blood or something like that, because that would be creepy as, because, you know... Hmm... Mm. The human body is also made up of, um, you know, water and blood technically has water in it as and well. If you actually, so. actually, the funny thing is, if you actually think back to ReZero, um, the frozen bond, what Emilia did to some of the people with the ice power, he could actually yeah. do the same. He could actually do the same with the, when the, the blood, you think about it. I do, I do like to think that some of the influences, for, like, of the blood manipulation actually comes from uh, Avatar The Last Airbender uh, because that was of course very popular in the early 2000s so a lot of people watched that and got ideas from it so yeah it makes sense that like Ray Zero and maybe Dead Alive have the uh, ability of like do you, for lack of a better term like blood bending um, but yeah that is a very scary and unique power, but it is a good, it's an interesting connection there between, say, Avatar and that, uh, well, that sort of power. Well, I'll leave it at that for, for Yoshino power, but in season three, yeah. in season three, though, you saw how she turned to that sort of like arm remote. So yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. So you can say Yoshino power is actually a lot stronger than you think she is, but it's just that he doesn't have the confidence the willingness to use it because like it's because if Shido wasn't there for her most of the time then I, I wouldn't say that she would become what she is in season two and three but it's because Shido was oh, there yeah. she felt she has this sort of connection she really developed this sort of uniqueness to her power and trust me man when Yoshino she can get a lot more badass when it comes later in the season of their life I can see why many people start to go start to like Yoshino more later in the season like really late in day life if, they, if we get if we get like a yeah. season five season six so just for now she's just gonna she's gonna be one of those like supporting characters and yoshino though even though i would say she's not my favorite but i respect her as her uh for what she done so far for shido and what she would oh, yeah. eventually do in the franchise so i it's not that i don't like her or hate her it's just that i don't she's not like my waifu category Although Kawaii Crew, though, if he was here, he would highly disagree with me because he's a he loves Yoshino. Yeah, yes, he loves Yoshino. <laughs> yes, that's a good point. Yeah, he's a good, he's a great fan of uh, Yoshino. But don't so, you? But but do you? Re so before we move on to Yoshino, what do you think of her? What do you think she is? A pure spirit or human? I reckon Yoshino is actually a pure spirit, especially considering the fact you you're saying of how old she really is. Um, she's definitely a pure spirit, I think. Uh, that makes the most sense to me at this point in time. Like, again, Origami started off as human, but became spirit afterwards, um, and, like, during season two. Uh, we can get into that, actually. I have a few thoughts on that, uh, because I'm curious about that. But we'll get, once we, we'll, when we get to season two, um, I'll bring it up. But yeah, Oshino, I think, is pure spirit, mainly because of how, again, the ability that she has with the her rabbit puppet as well, um, that's just not something a normal human would have, I think. Like, again, 
some of them were human originally as well, but I just can't see Yoshino at this point in time, I should say, being um, previously a human. I think she's pure spirit at this stage anyway. Again, I like to be prov proven wrong, <laughs> uh, but I'll get into that once we get to season four, I think. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Obviously, I can't really dive into more stuff around Yoshino because yeah. it's all the territory. But yeah, let's move on to episode seven, where we introduce to S girl. Oh, um, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Katurumi. Uh, Katuru uh, uh, God damn it. Kurumi. Yeah, Kurumi. Um, okay, before, yeah. I, before I start blabbing, before I start blabbing how good she is, what's your impression of her? For the past three First, seasons. I didn't like her. For the past three first, seasons. See, through, in season one, I didn't really like her that much because of her attitude, I will say. But again, she was introduced like late in the season, as you said, like episode seven. So I knew like, and then she wasn't actually around that much either. Like she appeared in episode seven. I don't think she appeared in episode eight. And then like she reappeared in like episode nine or ten. Um, and then that was it. Like we didn't really see much about her. Um... And then, of course, season two happened, and that's when we got more development from her, and I started to like her some more. Um, and yeah, I do like. She's not my best girl, obviously, but I am a fan of her now. After the first, after the at least season two and three happened, I'm definitely a lot of, a big fan of her, especially after we're well, jumping forward here to season three. Um, the time uh, paradox event, I guess you could call it, um, where she sent, you know, Shido back in time to stop her Ogami, a spirit form, and it turned because Ogami wanted to obviously say, at least maybe save her parents from um, the quote unquote spirit that killed uh her parents which she thought i think was katori um but it turned out of course it was herself because again time paradox but anyway that point when Kato uh, Kato uh sorry karumi did that and we saw you know the reasons why she explained the reasons why she did that she helped out shido that really solidified my liking for her because it really showed that like not only has Kurumi like grown as a character but it shows also that she's not just a mysterious spirit and not can't honestly say that she's a villain either because for a while it did look like she was playing the villain card especially I think, again, you could correct me on this one. I can't remember if it was at the end of season one or if it was in season two. I think it was season one, but the point where Kurumi finds Origami and, like, wraps her up in, her, in you know, her arms, like, all those arms and, like, pushed her against the walls, sort of, that scene. Do you remember that in the school? You mean episode I can't remember seven, if that right? was... You mean episode seven, uh, That right? was episode seven? Yeah. Yeah, that was episode seven then? Yeah. I do because I obviously when it comes to me I remember the scenes more than what episodes they were or what seasons they were I just remember like yeah the scenes so I remember the scene of which when Origami was grabbed by her but I couldn't remember what episode it was yeah because when we first got introduced to Kurumi of course she's like playing mind games with Origami she's like grabbing Origami with all her arms and like teasing her essentially um but yeah later on when she started to help shit her a lot more that was when i started to really enjoy her character yes and what's even great about it too is that you can still claim at the end of season three that kurumi is still a very mysterious character because we still don't know that much about her too uh like we don't know why she has so many like versions of her we don't know how exactly her time manipulation works yet. I'm sure that may come in season four, uh, but or season five, as you said, or season six. But yeah, Kurumi for me grew on me a lot throughout the 
uh, the three seasons so far. Okay. Okay, so where should I start correcting you? Ah. Uh, so well, we go- for more than a sex mate. <laughs> regarding to why there's so many versions of Kurumi, it's a clones. Are you sure you don't know about that? Yeah, the yeah the clones. That's it. It's, like I said, it's been, even though it's been like a couple of months, I this is why I kind of want to get wanted to do this podcast like a lot earlier. Uh, but you know, life happens because when it's, when you get something done earlier, it sticks with you a bit more, and there was like more stuff I could remember. But now, it's because it's been a couple of months. Um, obviously it's starting to evaporate from my mind. That's why I forgot it was, the, you know, the clones. Uh, anyway, you continue. Okay, so where do I begin with this? First off, Kurumi, Kurumi, Kurumi. So I won't, I won't blame you for not liking her at the first season. Trust me, not many people did because of her evil personality and stuff like yeah. that like you know she, she was, was she was, said, she she was, was playing the villain card. she was she was just being psychotic most of the time like you know the episode nine the, the iconic laugh and stuff like that i was like okay that is yeah that's creepy and stuff like that don't trust me when i watched that scene at first go it was like oh my god she's indeed an antagonist but then after a couple of uh, background reading and of course what we saw from season two and three Oh, now it makes sense why she did all that in back in season one. Because you can tie in yeah. why she did all that from the future seasons and of course back on reading too. But here's the thing about Kurumi. She's a fantastic actor. She is a fantastic actor. She can even get an Oscar if she wants to. She she can <laughs> she's a really good manipulator. She knows how to play around with people's emotions and how to play around, you know, um fooling people, playing the mind games. You can see how she went from such an adorable, cute high school girl to a very evil girl, right? That takes yes. skill. That takes skill. Yeah. That takes skill to get into that stage. You just switch her, switch, switch immediately to that personality, or should I say, switch to her fake personality? I would say. Her, yeah. Her, well, you can say Kurumi first. First off, I need to correct you. First, she first appeared in episode five. Easter oh, egg. Yeah. Easter well, egg. Because she was an Easter egg and she appeared in like a crowd scene in the background or something like that. Wasn't that it? In the, it or uh, like... um, she's in the rain. She was in the rain. In so, the rain, okay. So, so yeah, just a bit of an Easter egg for you. She actually appeared in episode 5. You just need to make sure you have a sharp eye. So yeah, uh, without out of the way. Um, without like I probably shit will, out of the way. <laughs> side note, I probably will re-watch Dead Alive closer to when season 4 starts to air. So I'll go through it all again uh, and before season four airs, just so I can, you know, familiar familiarize myself with um, everything again and also catch anything that I, you know, missed first time. So, around. but anyway. So yeah, going back to Kurumi. Um, yeah, season one, she wants to eat Shido. Yeah, no, not well, not yeah, eat, 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 eat Shido like yeah, that, yeah. that terminology. But she wants to take Shido's power, the spirit power in him. But yeah, if you ask, if you if you think about it, why does she really want Shido power? Did she really mention it? Do you think? Do you ever remember why she mentioned she why she wants Shido's power? I'm trying to think back, I don't. Hmm. Hmm. It was the it was I actually didn't... it was actually a cut content from the first from the volume itself. Okay, so they left it out on purpose. Well, they're going it, to come back it, to it. It, they could, you could say that, but also if you read the light novel, you already know why she targets Shido, but do you want to know? No, I want to keep it as blind as possible, as I said, just in case they do bring it up in season four or five or which, whichever one that they and, and that, bring it up and in. That, and that reason is also why she has a change of heart when she meets she met Shido again in season two and three. Yeah, because I do remember, it's oddly enough, I remember more of, like, season two and three more than season one. <laughs> like, again, this is why when I rate, like, the end of my third reaction, like, I, when I, episode 12 of season three, I remember ranking, like, the seasons in order of, you know, my favorite to least favorite. Mm-hmm. And I think season one was, like, on the, like, the lowest, because it was just, like, by that time, I honestly had forgotten most of what happened in season one, but I could remember p- more of season two and three, and I still remember more of season two and three now than season one. Um, 
again, it's because mainly because season one was more like introducing us to the characters and so on than um, actual plot development. I got again, there was like don't, don't get me wrong, there was still plot development there, but like it wasn't really the main focus. I gotta disagree with you. Season one has a lot of stuff that you can read between the lines. Like I I I call season one a masterpiece. Uh, again, this is this I, is going, this is going. I'm saying this as someone who's only seen it once. So like once I rewatch season one and rewatch the others, I'm sure I'm going to pick up on things that I missed the first time. That I'll go like, ah, oh, of course. Um, season that one, sort of thing. season one has always been my masterpiece since I watched it back in 2013. So. Uh, I don't know why people don't like it because like season I, I got more enjoyment out of season one because it has a much better balance between wholesomeness um uh, fight and of course um you know get to tackle the lore of their life but also if you go back to kumi uh what she's what she said to shido at the top of the school she said that Shido, you are the one i want you gonna help me out with, with what my goal is yeah, I, I think they and we have, and we don't know her, her what her goal is yet. Like that was that's been hinted at throughout the three seasons as well. Like I remember it also bring she bring up that goal again thing back in following that in season three. Season two was it season? Hang on, season two. Yeah, uh, when they when Toko is taken to the uh, tower and like Shido and. Uh, her rate it that was a great scene like that was one of the best moments you do in the you, you do know me, that do you know you do know that she was just using shido right yeah yeah I, yeah i got that yeah but I, I still have to say it was a great scene of them raiding the tower because i know that she was she wanted something in the tower but when she, she got mentioned there, she mentioned it in the, in the last episode do you remember it i'm sorry to say that i can't remember it you know, she was looking. For, she was actually looking for a certain spirit that helps her with a goal. That's right. Yeah, she's looking for a certain spirit that we don't know about yet. Again, it could be Phantom, but it could be someone that we don't know yet. In that's going to be introduced in season four. Um, to be honest, probably though, another female to, to, spirit. To, to be honest, though, here's the funny thing: she was supposed to be introduced in season three already. But she was just skipped over. You can say she was not meant to appear in season three, but she they added that volume in season three, and she was supposed to appear in it, but she never did. So I'm worried for season four right now because they literally cut out the the biggest content that can lead on to season four. Mm. But that because like in season three, the, the last episode, Primi wasn't not supposed to be there with this other spirit. She was supposed to be on her solo mission to find this certain spirit. To help her with her goal, she was not. She never really saved Shido from. You know, uh, she never saved the girl from Shido power. She was never there to have her like a five second cameo. She was just finding that spirit that can lead on to the second, the fourth season. Like after season one ended, the reason why Rumi have a change of heart for Shido, and not just because Shido like saved her from Kotori, but she also f realized that, but Shido could actually. He, uh, you, we can help her achieve a goal in another way or form. Doesn't really, really require Shido. Because she found out that Shido is... Um, she actually needs Shido more than not just his power, but Shido as a person. You can see why now mm. she has a change of heart. Because, you know, Kurumi could easily... Easily... Just, just, just have killed just, him. Just kill Shido, like, literally in when she was hiding from Miku. Like, they were one-to-one. -one, literally. Shido yeah. was tired. She, he ran out of mana. He couldn't really manifest any powers. And Kurumi could easily just take Shido out already. But she did not. And he decided to help Shido. There's a reasoning why she did it. And that always, that really ties to the whole theme of uh, the, the whole mission of Kurumi itself now. Not only the fact that she helped uh, uh, Shido with, you know, rescue, uh, take, helping him, like, help Miku, like, to stand by for the time being but also help Shido like um, get into the tower too and but, you know, buy time yeah. for him by fighting off those like Basuris and stuff like that the robot basically uh, but she also you know she, like I said she was using Shido but she's using Shido in a very interesting way that can 
it allowed her to finally achieve a goal because like she found an alternative to her plan so that's what mm. that's why I need, I need to let people know why the reasoning why she acted all that um scary and creepy in season one was to really hide her true intention to me it's not evil i call her an anti-hero she, yeah she, she's definitely an anti-hero like she again she starts off almost like a villain in season one but then again she, though she's a fantastic actor i, I i've been yeah, saying she's a she's a fantastic actor she knows how to play around with the emotions and get people going mm. so yeah what you what you saw from season one just say that you can just say that is that's 50 percent of what kurumi really is she has a lot she can she she's a lot better as a character like in season i mean she did her role in season three don't get me wrong but season four um let me think again no season four yeah she that's where you can really start to open up to Kurumi a lot. Like, you really understand what, uh, everything she did in Season 1, Season 2, Season 3 as a purpose. And I, I and yes, I know a lot of people say, Oh, but she's a yonder and she killed people. Her power is so de- OP. Hey, because They're of because, because of, of her power, she saved Shido like not once, but twice or three times. Because of her power, and also, Shido, she, Shido, she Shido, does... Shido, she, she helps, she saved the world, basically. By sending Shido back to the past to save Origami. Yes. Yeah, she saved Origami. And the, also, I also remember that scene in the park where, like, she comes across those bullies blowing, the, like, the little cat. And, like, it shows that scene. Yeah, sure, it's brutal. But it shows that she also has a heart because she actually cares for this cat. Um, so, what does she, yeah, she totally, like, kills these guys. Uh- but in a way they like it, it shows it's done in a way that shows that they deserve it in a way um rather than showing that kurumi is just like oh I'm, I'm just going to massacre these people for like no reason no it shows that she sees this cat like in distress this kitten in distress yeah you can, then, like, you can, you can like say him. you can say that the re- did she kill those people yes it's heartless but she did it for a reason she killed though because yeah, she you know, had she, a reason for yeah, it. She, she could easily just um take the guy uh just absorb them to her shadow and just send her send them to the the second level of her shadow to take their time away. But yeah, going back to Kurumi, why she yeah, she killed those people. I mean makes sense because they're harming cats. She have a sense of justice after all. But here's the thing though. Kurumi, her power is a is a gift, but yet it's a curse. Because like, you yeah, know, you I know, the more that. the more she yeah. uses her power, the more Time she used up her in her life force, so she. That's why yeah. when people heard that she when when it was announced the fact that she killed over like ten thousand people in her lifetime or something like that, many people started. To, oh my god, she is scary as fuck. Oh my god, don't associate me, don't associate her with me and stuff like that. But dude, do you guys know that those numbers are people that does bad things? That that literally. Yeah. She killed all those people that have been doing injustice things around the world. So she basically, uh, well, she didn't really like kill them. She absorbs them into the shadow. Um, yeah. And the reason why in episode seven, you saw all those blood and stuff like that is because she used her hands to rip those people apart. To take them into the sh- take, She take, was so angry with them. No, 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 yeah, no. no. She, she, just, she wasn't angry at all. She wasn't, she just... You, the reason her the thing about her shadow power is that it's like a, think of it as like a stomach think of it like a stomach uh, all right yeah you cannot just like, absorb everything in and disabsorb it expects you like dissolve immediately it takes time so ripping those people apart into small pieces digest quicker and stuff like that so that's the reason why she had to you know resort to ripping them apart yes i know it sounds creepy and stuff like that but those guys were hitting on her yeah. those are bad guys okay so shut up guys yeah. so yeah <laughs> so and of course she did the thing it's just intimidation yeah it's just a, it's a part of yeah, her character imita- intimidation it's just a, she did not literally oh. just i mean okay it was just intimidation sadly also in going to dead alive season two you're, uh one character that one spirit that's introduced in, in part two that I honestly do consider to be the worst aspect of season two 
is unfortunately Miku. Oh, we can do that later. But, we're, we're getting to that later. We're, getting to that. we're, 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 ju- to we're jumping ahead right now. So just, let's just finish up with Kurumi. Yes, I know. Yeah. She's my wife. That's why I'm defending her in any, any ways possible. But there's a reason why I'm defending her. Because I know what she's all about. Really all about. And not just that, she has a nice body. She has a nice abs. She's she has pale skin. She has <laughs> she her boob size. Yeah, is, her right, boob right. size is average. Okay, okay. It's good size. And not to mention that she, black hair. I don't know why, but I'm not. I I black hair anime girls looks amazing. Oh, they should. We should have more black hair uh, anime girls. Seriously, <laughs> like you, you, it's not every day you see a black hair girl with red eyes. So. Yeah, that's that's, that's why I uh, that's uh, why she her Kurumi, not not just her character her physique is just right, the Kurumi best. Kurumi has one red eye. The other is a clock. No, her original her original eye color is red. So, but yeah, clock because of her powers and stuff like that. We all know that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I can sit here and talk all day about Kurumi, but that again, that would dive, yes, that, would, mean, dive, that, would, to, that will dive, that will dive, that will dive, that will dive into spoiler territory. So. Yeah, let's move on to like Kotori. So we all, yes, it's a shocking fact that Kotori was a spirit. No shit, of course. How did you, why do you think was yeah. she, why do you think she was not, why do you think she was so confident that she was not dead when she, she when she took a shot by Origami back in episode three? Think about it. Well, because, hmm. She like, dude, probably she, she's, she's, got, a, she's got a connection to. Dude, she, she's got a connection to Shido as here's, well. Here's the thing, guys. So, here's the thing, guys. Shido was dead, not in, uh, like back in episode three. He was literally dead. No one can survive that bullet shot, but he did. And Kotori was like, "Oh no, oh Nija, you die." She was like, "Uh, yeah, move on." So, the, so she was like so confident. And then, and, and you can, uh, not just because of her the organization she worked in, but she, she, she has confidence in Shido surviving. Why do you think she just throws Shido in, into the scene with Toka? Like when she went Toka, when she, Shido was one to one with Toka, that's dangerous as fuck. She told, Toka, could, it also, Toka could kill Shido, if you think about it. But I, I think it also has, to, it has also, the reason also why she can do that with Shido is because she, Again, going back to uh, part two, she um, she witnessed you know Shido going back into the past. She was so she remembered that. So she knows that you know uh, Shido. No, 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 no. Has no, no, no. no, no. She she has childhood memories. Huh? She still remembers the day that she gave Shido the power. So she just they just don't remember Phantom. They just don't remember Phantom. Oh, okay. Oh, because I was going to say, like, maybe because of that, she remembers, you know, she knew version she, of Shido going she, back into the past. No, no, no. She knew Shido. Uh, she, she knew Shido has spirit power since five years ago. Because of Phantom. But, so, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, that's right. Didn't Phantom, like, speak to her or something like that, like, in the past? Yeah, she used to like, watch. I saw she's, Phantom. She's the, she's the reason why she kissed Shido in the first place. Hmm. So, uh, let, me, right. let me just turn on the icon. It's getting hot in here. Sure. <sighs> Sorry about that. Um. So yeah. I, good. So yeah. Going back to like um Kotori. Yeah. Of course you can. Kotori exposed herself as being a spirit. She's a freed. She used cam cameo her firepower, but the cost of her firepower is berserk. Berserk. Yes. Get, get fire. Fire, you, 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 if you actually think about, if you actually go back to, you actually come to think of it, her power actually ties to Shizu from Slime, actually. You see, saw Shizu, she yeah, went berserk. Was, yeah, so, yeah. So, that's what it reminded me of when I, when I saw the scene, like when she, in free, like, shows up in her powers, like, hey, that's like in Slime. Um, so that made me think of that. I was like, oh, that's a, Interesting uh, connection, even though it's not really a connection. Because you know. like her um, power ties to um, hell, hellish fire. You you will go berserk yeah. because you show the evil side of things and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's why Kotori never really go out using her powers because of the of the threat of going to that berserk stage, overusing it. Yeah, um, we definitely saw what happens when she does overuse it. I think it was like during on the school roof 
I think it was. It was. With, um... No, and not just that the amusement park too, but that that also yeah. that also. Oh yeah, that, that, oh yeah, the amusement park. That, that is was also insane. like insane. That is also the reason why not a lot of people are like a fan of Katori because like we don't get to see much of her in action or much of her. Con she all she did was sit in a chair and com command Shido, and not a lot of people are a fan of her doing that. I mean, if you're into like little sister character, then sure, why not? I'll give you that, but. The, the the reason is why Kotori, uh, yeah. like Kotori is not the like a fan favorite in their life. I mean, I don't see a lot of people like talk about Kotori a lot in the community page, but yeah, I can say because like she don't contribute much to the fight. No, but at the same time, you could argue that she doesn't need to because again, she's like the head boss. She she's, she's in command, so she, she's a commander. She she's. Yeah, she is the one that like gives the orders and people like stand at attention and salute and say, yes, ma'am. But like, we also now know because of her power, her berserk power, if she ever lets loose like that, it can end really badly for like, not just her because she can like die from it. Um, but also if like anyone is close to her at that time, like Shido or, or like any of the other spirits, they can easily get hurt or killed from her if she totally loses it. So it makes sense why she wants to remain on the ship most of the time and do the, you know, or and order them about because of that particular reason. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Well, um, yeah. And Katori, honestly, is probably like you say that Katori isn't really talked about much, which is true, but at the same time, like, I think Katori has become one of my, like, third or fourth, I'll say fourth favorite character in the uh, Dead Alive universe because of um, of how she, you know, improves over the season, how we learn more about her. Uh, it makes sense to me that why people don't like her. But I do think, yeah, she is... If it wasn't for Katori, for example, like, nothing would have gotten done, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. chances are the world would have ended if, you know, Katori wasn't there. Like, let's forget, like, if we totally forget about the five years in the past thing, like, when she first uh, essentially met Shido. Um, if you ignore that, like, even in the present day, if it wasn't for Katori being there, like, Torka would have taken, would, would have destroyed everything first up. Like, every time a spirit showed up, like, Katori was there to, like, go, okay, Shido, go do your thing, um, and, you know, save the world. So, yeah, she's a great strategist, mm -hmm. I think. And also, she's, like, a great, uh, she's a great commander. She knows what to do in, like, pretty much any situation that comes her way, um, and that takes a lot of effort to, you know, do that. And also, at the same time, like, once, like, later on, like, once everything comes down, like, she also has to, like, turn on the uh, younger sister, uh, I guess, mode again, like, the, the other side of her, to, like, pretend, well, not pretend, but, like, you know, the, the two sides of Katori are really interesting in that in that regard. She has a split so, personality. Yeah, she has a split personality. Yeah. Katori really is a very unique character, and I think a lot of people don't give her as much credit as she really deserves, because, again, like, she, sure, she has a split personality, but at the same time, to be, again, as I said, it takes a lot of effort to, like, command not only, like, Shido, but her forces on the ship, also, like, also trying to, uh, command the other spirits once they come on board as well so there's a lot going on for katori so yeah you got to give her credit where i mean she, she is due, so. she's basically a manager just think of her like that yeah she's just a man she just dealt with the management and stuff like that she provides the support she provides the technology yeah she's right support she, she she also gives advice from time to time as well um she even helps shido with the like all right, this spirit, the spirit's done this. All right, what's the response? Choose like choose an option, sort of thing. And like, yeah, she does a lot. So yeah, 
gotta give her credit where credit is due, and yeah, she do, uh, sorry, Katori does manage all that, and it's a, like, in a way, I guess you could say that in part two with the uh, with the park, with the amusement park, um, we've seen what happens when she loses control, and that shows us that she like that it almost shows like she it's like her human side as well like she's also she also makes mistakes oh no oh no she, she, oh no she just um she just stepped in because it's desperate time cost with desperate measure she could easily just not yeah. she could easily not interfere when they were in trouble with kurumi but it's just that you know they were in desperate need of help they couldn't they couldn't really handle kurumi right now and so yeah she stepped in exposed herself I mean, she she could easily just hide herself in the Forbidden Spirit for into like season three maybe, so but she decided not to. She, she, yeah. So that shows that that she really do care. She, when she she also read the situation, she do not just not join in. She could easily, I mean, she could actually if you think about it, though, so she could actually join in during the Yoshino problem, but she did not. But she, yeah, she, 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 she decided not to because she don't she trusts she though. But Shido was yeah, she trusts Shido. Shido, Shido was reckless though, but she still trusts her Nijan. But the reason yeah. why she stepped in was because Kurumi was too much for them to handle. So yeah. that's why she only steps stepped in, in when when the situation calls for it. When they when even she realizes like, all right, so, like again, like going into like season two and three, like those massive battles, like Shido can only handle so much, so she has to step in and handle the other side of the fight as well like mm. for example when like they're on the ground Shido and the others are on the ground like fighting and like then suddenly like her ship gets attacked so she has to focus on that so like she has to cut communication from Shido for a while just so she can concentrate on like surviving and not get shot down out of the air like there's a lot going on for her <laughs> so yeah of course whatever <laughs> I mean, obviously, she also have another role. I mean, it was mentioned in season two, anyways, um, that you know she is also gonna be the she also gonna kill Shido if Shido goes berserk in season three. Which, yeah, which she was about to, but they cut out that content. But I think they did include it. But I, it's just like so vague, to be honest. I could, I wish they could have done a bit better with volume th thirteen adaptation, but. They messed it up. Well, they, they, again, they really again, messed it we have up. To remember which, we have to remember which studio was behind season three. That's why many people, why, that's sense. why many people hated season three because well, I mean people like people yeah. like season three because of the origami arc. That's it. And and yeah. it could it could have easily just ended up with origami arc. But they decided to adapt a fucking volume thirteen. It's a, uh, I mean, obviously they have no other choice though, because like they have one more episode to go. I do. I wouldn't mind if they do, they do like an anime original episode. Just go ahead. Just yeah, do it. I was going. Yeah, I do remember thinking that as well. Like they could have like, because heck, what they could have done was like, hey, we actually like run out of content from this volume, and, and because so of what that, we're going to do, and because is, of that, you, you they they really messed up. Potori as the character because like, like because I like, reckon, in, in, uh, I think people would have been fine. I think people a lot of fans would be fine. Like, oh, that's understandable. They've run out of content. What are they going to do for the extra episode? Oh, let's just have a random I don't know like shopping mall episode or beach episode. Like, it makes no freaking sense um, in the long term. Yeah, we can get into that. We can, at least, we, we can get into that later. But uh, but I need to just yeah. That, I need to, you know what we're getting at here? Like, I just need to get back to Kotori situation regarding to the final episode of third season three because like we haven't really seen much of Kotori for the for for the major, for most of season three because yeah, know, she season was, three she's she barely was, in it. She was like, just managing most of the time. But in season, because it, if we actually adapt volume thirteen properly, the Shido disaster arc, she has a really good character development. Like she really has this sort of like developer that we don't really see much of. And because the, obviously I read the light novel, so I, I totally understand why she did it. But it's just that the way they adapted that final episode, it's just like makes her character so, I don't know, so like so vague and like you have to see much of her. That's why I, I could, because like I wasn't too happy when the episode, the final episode came out. No fan should be happy All right. All about right. it. So what? 
How about this? I, I will ask you this then. What if with season four, what they do right at the beginning of season four, they redo the last episode they of won't. season three? They won't. Or they, they ignore season, they ignore the last episode of season they three won't. and just adapt. They won't. Sure about that though? They won't. I sure about that? They won't, trust me, because like I saw the, I saw the preview images, I saw the teaser images. Yeah, I don't think they will, to be honest. Like, it's, it's already there. Well, you don't know. They, they, already... they could do it. They could. That could surprise uh, you and be like, uh, oh, unless, by the way, unless, we're just going to read a little bit. Uh, unless they pull a fucking face in that readaptation and stuff like that. But no, I don't think so. So, yeah, because JC Staff did the, did, did the biggest damage to the community already. They lit, That's why many Daylight community that I know, that I'm part of, hated JC Staff for what it did with the final episode. Because cause, cause the way they ended off... Oh my god, I can get into that later when we talk about Season 3. Uh, let's, yeah. let's just finish up Katori. Um, so, yeah. um, yeah, Kotori, good little sister, play, most, mo most of the time play a supporting character, so, yeah. yeah. No, nothing really much to say much about her. Let's move on to season two. That's where we really yeah. dive into the- That's where things really start the kick -in. getting interesting. Well, yeah. actually the thing got it's interesting, all... actually things got interesting, like, mostly when Toka turned in burst mode, but, yeah, you can say, yes. we introduced to a new villain, Westcott. Rescott and yeah, he is the worst villain. Uh, Dude, like he's meant, he, he's meant to be hated. He's meant, he's meant to be that. He's meant to be hated, but he's like one of those villains where like, like you just go, all right, can you defeat him now? Can you actually just defeat him? Can you stop like bring him back? Can you just <laughs> seriously, Shido, just please, just kill this guy. Trust me, he's more. He'll be more disfigured. And, you know, well, honestly, you one more... of the things that really annoyed me throughout, though, like, okay, I don't mind villains living, okay? I don't mind having a recurring villain. I don't mind that. One of the things I honestly did not like, honestly, is Origami's part in all that. Like, come on, girl. Like, you can't see that there's something really wrong here. Like, you're working with the guy. And you can't tell that, hang on, something like the way he's acting doesn't line up with what else is going on. Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, Origami, that's the only annoying thing I don't like so far. <laughs> is that she just can't seem to figure out like, hang on, these guys keep following Shido around. Yeah, sure, Shido is at fault for like, like telling her. Or anything like that. Hey, just let you know, like, this la random lady keeps attacking me. And she's part of, like, this mysterious group that, you know, is a bit suspicious. Can you look into it? And then she goes, oh, yeah, sure, okay. And then she finds out, oh, it's this same boss. It's my boss and also this lady that... It's just like, what the hell? Please, or, like, I'm hoping at some point, at the very least, in, like part four, or maybe even part five, I don't know, that Origami actually gets a clue about that and goes, hang on, why am I working with this guy again? Uh, I don't know, I, I just mean, feel like there's something... I mean, Origami, like, or, Origami gave up working with Westcott after season three ended, so I don't know what you're on about with season four. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, Bad Scott is, is, uh, is basically the biggest villain for the series. I mean, no shit, of course. But what he's what he's going to do in Season 4, if they, if they adapt that scene, of course, it will be more hated than ever before. Trust me. What he's what he going uh, to me get, what he gonna go the do? Way I, what way he, I can, what he the gonna, only thing I can kind of see him doing then is, like, the same with what happened in Part 2, in Season 2, is, like, he's going to kidnap a spirit again. And try to inverse them because that seems to be what his end goal is. Oh, is he worse. wants to inverse the spirits. Worse, worse, totally. worse. Oh, it's gonna be worse than that. Oh worse. crap! Worse. Uh, what are you gonna do to a spirit is just beyond ethical. So yeah. So anyhow, yeah, you can say Westcott. Yeah, he's hated. Ellen is just there to be his sidekick, so you can't really yeah, like, Ellen, you can't really blame her. Yeah. But she's also the the reason why. This whole story began in the first place. She is she contribute to something, which I'm not gonna say anything about it. But she, she and Westcott mm. actually mentioned this in season two. It's just you need to like re really understand the meaning behind the word 
but they actually gave an, an, a hint to Shido life before the whole story began. See? So yeah, West Scott, you can say he and Ellen and one other guy. It's a is they play a massive role too. Oh, well, is how the well the other guy the the guy that was in the car that um the old man I think it was. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They, those three had yeah. the, see those three are you can say the real starter of the story. They did something mm. that contribute to. Um, this whole story to begin in the first place, but I'm not gonna say much about it because I'm pretty sure we'll mention season four if they get into it, of course. So, yeah, yeah. you can so you can say Westgard just say he's a villain. Don't expect him to turn good in any way or form. Yeah, so, I don't. Know. He's one of those villains I don't want to see redeemed. Honestly, I, like he's one. As I said, he's one of those villains I honestly want to see defeated. I want to see him get his comeuppance. I want to see him actually die honestly like what like again with slime like slime did it really well because we got introduced to like the church the um uh uh Falmoth, et cetera, and they you know massacred like children people uh got you know lady woman and all that you wanted to see the, the comeuppance there you wanted to see rimuru come in and destroy them that's the same here like there's only like having that's the only problem with these sorts of long running shows and light novels is that and if you continue to have the same villain you have to make it you have to make sure like i don't know sometimes the hero wins and sometimes the villain wins you can't always just have the villain winning and you can't always have the hero winning obviously it needs to be an equal balance and i do think so far there has been a bit of an equal balance between you know the hero and the villains winning each time but that can only go so far so at some point there has to be a point where again i'm not expecting i'm obviously kind of it sounds like westcott's gonna be around for like half the show like going into like season five or something like that but all i'm saying is that sometimes it does pay off to have the, him lose and i think we have seen that a few times but mm, it just depends on what happens next. Uh, well, lose on the s in the sense that you know sometimes like he, they go into battle, obviously, and like Westcott actually gets injured, for example, like I don't, don't know, like his arm or leg. Don't expect that. That's what I'm trying to get. Don't at. expect that. I know. Soon. I'm probably not expecting. I, I know. It's, it's kind of what I want to see happen, but you know what I'm trying to get at here. Like there has to be an equal balance. If the villain keeps winning all the time then there's a problem i have to say hmm. i'm not if that keeps happening in throughout like season four and five of hey the villain like attacked a spirit and did this and this and then the heroes couldn't do nothing about it i'm just like okay okay now you're losing me hmm. that's the point where i'm just like the needs in a show like this there needs to be equal balance hmm. and if that is not there then there's a problem we we shall see. Obviously, I can't say much. I know. I'll. I can't say much. Like, don't get, like it's been really good so far. Even like season three had definitely had massive problems, but I still really liked it. So I'm hoping that will be the same with season four. Again, because I'm going going to be in going in a little obviously a little bit blind now. Like I'm going to know some things about what's going to happen next. But yeah. That's my only concern with it is that I think there needs to be a good um, equal balance between the uh, the heroes and the villains. If there's no equal balance there, that's when things start to fall apart story-wise. So we'll see what happens in season four. Well, I can't really say much because you can say, I mean, I can understand where you're going with the fact that Oh, there's the equal balance, but sometimes though, you just need to make sure that the villain gets what they want and then it will just turn on them later. I mean, the whole concept yeah. of, of introducing allowing Westcott to the winning edge over many of the characters in this story, which will play a massive role until the end, until like maybe even season six, is because, you know, that, that thing that Westcott is working for can turn on him very quickly. So, 
that's why I say that's why I say that just be patient with West Scott right now. Hate him yeah, all you uh, want. Yeah, I, just be patient with him. He he will soon have his. Yeah, ball. like I I am honestly from the sounds of it, I am expecting now that West Scott's going to continue like kidnapping spirits and do awful things to them. That that's why I am expecting that. I guess because so. again that there's something there that, that he wants, uh, but what that is I don't know yet. But I'm. I am still kind of interested in finding out what that is. Uh, yeah, wait and see. Anyway, we also got wait, introduced... Wait and see, wait and see, man. Wait and yeah. see. So, yeah. Right, shall we talk about the other the other three characters that were introduced in part two? Yeah, I mean... The, the, other, you, the other... You mean the Yamai sisters, Miku, and... Yeah, Yamai spirits, and, uh, the, and worse, worse go, um, you know... Yamai, the... Yamai sisters. Don't call them Yamai spirits. Yamai spirits are a different being. Yeah, my sisters. You you say uh, yeah. you just say uh, yeah, my you just say yeah, my spirit. That's the spoiler for season six already. So, um, yeah, go yeah, my sisters and make her mm, worst girl. But uh, yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously the yeah, my sister arc has to be the one that we just arc in season two, in my opinion, because like, yes, you introduce the twins, but in the end they like each other. I mean, no shit. Of course, they spent so much time together. How could it not? Why? Why would they want to kill kill each other off? So that is some bad writing. If I, yeah. that's some bad writing to, yeah. in my opinion. To be honest, like if if they if they really go all out fighting each other, that pretty much bonded them even more. And you want to want Shido to choose one of the two girls. Shido did something very chatty. Why not two of you survive? And they and they talk things out and say, oh yeah, we do love each other. We do want each other to die. Yeah, that, that you could, is. You could just tell that is that, a cliche. That's just you could tell that That's cliche writing one hundred one. That's cliche writing one hundred one. I was like, bruh. It's honestly like it's one of those. I don't know what else. Like the writer was like, I don't know what to do in this situation, so I'm just going to have to do this, even though it's very cliche and very honestly dull no no there, there's a reason I, there's a reason why he did that because he wanted to lead on to shido trying to save them but uh, but you know to do that he need to borrow Hoka's power we all know to, shido yeah. has the healing power but do we but we also need to question can shido use other uh, spirit power that he steal? Yeah, other powers, and, yeah. and that's the reason why he had to go for the cliche -ness, so that shido can lead on to the plot where shido exposed that he can actually use more than one spirit power and he used Toka's power and because of Toka's power those spirits bonded lame writing but it, it needs to be done so oh my god trust me when when the when the yamai sister make the makeup and stuff like that i was like yeah i mean it's 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 needed it's expected but but could have done like a lot earlier into the the arc but again though like i said the reason why he write like he, the reason why he went for this direction so because so they can like properly lead on to like uh uh like you know the plot where she exposes his newer found feud ability and of course we also get to see Toka in danger Toka's weakened and yeah. over and strong and it's the bitch and most importantly origami felt useless in that situation i mean of course of course she she got stripped of her powers and stuff like that oh her asc powers yeah so you can say that Yamai sister R is basically wholesome. We get to see fan service. We get to see Yamai yeah, sister trying to fight for Shido's you know, interest, which is so boring to be honest. Out of all the girls that you know, the yeah, Yamai sister got the worst character development in my opinion. Like they're just in part in at least in, in part two and season two, right? But they get good character development later on in season three. Uh, so it does, it does kinda, uh no no uh, no no, no I, do, I wouldn't say that with character development their, their character development comes really later in this to this franchise but i know actually like if you talk about character development do you mean by individual development yeah individual then, development then you, I mean. then i would say that yeah season three because we get to see more so the the girls having their moment shido maybe that's why people will say Oh, maybe they do read it. They do have their own quality and stuff like that. But it, as a sister in general, yeah. though, they didn't really do much to the story. They're just there to support Shido. But if you had the, mm. the reason why I'm still kind of defending the girls because Kaguya Yamai, she's my she's my actually yeah. she's actually my third favorite girl in the series. 
No, actually, she's my. I cannot... She's like my fourth. Actually, she's my fourth favorite girl in the series now because like the thing about her character is that she has. She really has this of like uh, uh, more energy to her character than Yuzuru. Yuzuru is like more of this of like laid back character. It, it, people like Yuzuru mm. because of her opai, uh, because of her yeah. uh, caring personality. But sorry, I'm not that sort of people. <laughs> I'm more into like high energy girls, more like just sort of like um uh Chinobio sort of personality. And it also it also ties in why I like Kurumi because of her Chinobio gothic person uh personality too. But you can say the Yama sisters, if you focus individually, yes, you can say they get their own character development. But if you talk about sister in general, that's shitty to yeah. be honest. But yeah, the yeah, Yama, fair enough. The yeah, my sister arc. I don't worry. I don't really want to talk much more. But it's just like the arc that helps to introduce Shido's new power and just add more girls to its harem. That's it. The the the. Well, yeah. I'm, expect, well I'm expecting that to continue in part for all. Like, there's going to be a more spirits introduced that are going to be like oh trust part me of his heart trust, trust me the the spirit the other spirits is more well written than the Yamai yeah, sister's uh, arc. Yeah, my sister. Uh, yeah, my sister. But one. then you got Miku. Oh no, <laughs> uh, we we get to Miku later. But I, I, <laughs> Miku actually has some good character development to it. Um, so yeah, yeah, my sister. Out of all the character, uh, out of the, all the all, all uh, the sister or the spirit arcs and stuff like that from season one to season three is the weakest in my opinion. Uh, Yoshino. Uh, no, actually, Yoshino and yeah, my sister is like equal in terms. My opinion. So, mm, okay. so let's move on to the okay. the longest arc in season two, Miku's arc. And arc. And, oh, and trust boy. me, and trust me with this. Till now, even to now, I'm still not a fan of Miku. I'm still not. I'm not a fan of Miku at all. Like, she literally is at the bottom of my list of. Of, if I ranked all the girls in order, all the spirits in order, although, she's at the bottom. Although, I, although, the bottom. although I said that, I have a picture behind me for some reason. Uh, no, because like, because like, I got, I went to a, a day live like pop up shop in Japan. I, I, re- I went for a raffle. Right. I went for a raffle. They say, um, they, there's like a bunch of pictures face down. I need to pick one. I can only choose one. So I was hoping for to get Kurumi, but I got. Fucking Miku instead. I, I, I cannot just throw away a picture, so I, I had to do something with it. So I just stick it up there. So if people have good eyes and saw Miku behind me and say, "Why am I bitching on Miku?" Guys, there's a difference between getting a product and getting and talking about yes. the character. Okay, so let's just get out of the way. Yeah. So let's just go back to the <laughs> Miku arc. So yes, we know that Miku is a Yuri. She has a history with men, and she hates men because of yeah. her. Because of, I mean, that is some interesting writing, but. Very cliche writing, if I had to say for myself. It's very cliche, and also the fact that, like, it's not, like, it's one of those times in which, like, it's, hint- it's strongly hinted out of what happened, but in this regard, I think it was done poorly. Like, I think what they really, sh- if they were going to go all out, they should have just gone full bang on uh, out with this, instead of just, like, cutting around, like, the corners of, like, oh, this... Like this, Miku may like this may have happened to Miku sort of thing. They should have just gone. All right, let's just go full out and be like, again, maybe again. Okay, maybe not show it, but at least, but like, sh- maybe show it in a. Mm, I don't know how to put this. Like, oh, I, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. What I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think it's. I think it, it's I just th- like if, um. Actually, like, I, what they did in Kaki Shoujo. I could, I think could be, could be you know, easily been done in me for Miku's case because like, Miku when Miku told her backstory, she said, oh yeah because the, my manager framed me for not doing this and that. I, I, people that no the, yeah. the the journalists framed me for not doing this that. They are guys and stuff like that. I got I, I, my my image got destroyed. I, I lost my singing voice. That's weak to be honest. Yeah. So the thing that could really the, the, the thing that could have been done, and I know a lot of people will hate me for saying this. If she, but if she actually got assaulted by one of the men, that will that's what that's what, honestly what I was thinking throughout this po- that scene too because that's what I was thinking was that's what happened to her like she was sexually assaulted, but because it's kind of you know hinted at and also the fact they didn't go full out with it it gets conf- the message gets confused about what actually happened like in the end that sounds like oh. She got bitched by the guys, 
by the journalists. So. Yeah, you were bitched by the yeah, and you didn't. I didn't like you didn't want to do something that they wanted you to say, sing. Like it's that's it's, what I mean. Like it's a bit too weak because of it was bad. It was badly written. Like honestly, that's why I think it would have been better. Like uh, again, this is going to sound very controversial. I and if you're if you th find my opinion on this um, shocking, I apologize. But this is what I think they really should have done with this. Actually, have had Miku be sexually assaulted. Like, actually, I, I, I don't blame you. I, I agree. I agree. Like, actually, just something. Like, at least then we can go something like a PTSD. Go, like, something, something like a mess. You, like yeah, something like you, a PTSD. And also, if you don't want, and if it, if that was the case, like. If you don't really want to show that, that's fine. But at the same time, it would have worked better, I think, in with Miku's character of why she doesn't like men. And also, like, again, like, don't ha actually have the sexual assault happen. But like, but it's, well, maybe at the same time, like, kind of show it, but kind of not. You know what I'm getting at here? Like, have a flashback scene of it, like, of it, like, maybe about to happen. Like, it's going to, like, it, like. I don't know, a hand comes, like, a. you could even just make it like a dark silhouette hand, like, reaching out to, like, a dark silhouette version of Miku, sort of thing, like, about, like, to, I don't know, look like she's about to be groped or something like that. And it could have been one scene, but I've been like, okay, she was sexually assaulted. Okay, I understand about Miku's plight of why she doesn't like men now. And honestly, I think I would have liked her a lot more because of that. But because... The message got confused about like what the writer really wanted to show with this like what message was like in the end this sounds like oh miku didn't want to sing a certain song or didn't want to say something no 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 she didn't want to do you know, this for the journalists and stuff like that for the yeah she didn't want like but what what was that thing that she he didn't want to do for the journalists it's not explained because it's badly written um and that's the pr problem here is because it's badly written I don't get. No, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, actually, it's actually not badly written. It's just that it it, it comes across. Oh, it's not, poorly written. No, no, it's, it's just it's it's, no. no it's actually it didn't come across the message more clearly. Yeah, the message didn't come across, and because of that, this is why. Like, I reckon I could have liked Miku a lot more than what. This is why I would say like she's. I do. That's why I don't really want to say she's a bad character. She's just poorly written at this stage, and again. All they had to do was... And she's just like... She, even she's, So she just saved her. And she's like, Oh, thank you for saving me, darling. Yeah, oh, and she just brushes she just brushes it off. I was like, like, something... Like, oh, seriously, Miku, bruh. something traumatic... Bruh. Apparently, something very traumatic for you happened. And then you just suddenly brush it off. Like, if I was the... Again, if I was JC staff at that time, if I was, I was just like, uh, okay... No, it wasn't JC staff, actually. It was, in, it was a different studio. No, no, but what I mean... Oh, sorry. Was that a different... Oh, yeah, sorry. If I was... What studio was it? Season 2 uh, was a different oh. studio. Season 2 was yeah, a different uh, studio. Yeah, it was... Uh, production IMS. I would have honestly gone up to the writer and I would would have gone like, can you no. please explain what, what exactly is the message here that you're trying to put into this scene? And that way we can make it maybe a bit more clear of what you want to say with, with Miku because it's a mess honestly like you don't just have like a traumatic experience like that right, so I mean seriously though her, trauma brush it underneath the her carpet. traumatic experience is that she just men treat her badly and then she's lost yeah, a single voice the, I, was like, like, I was like that's why when I was reacting to this I was like I that was the in my mind I was thinking really dark thoughts like I was thinking okay she so was sexually assaulted by like news crew or something like that or by her producer but no it was like oh you didn't want to do something they want asked you for I'm like what and you don't like men because of it doesn't work and that makes miku's character weaker that's the problem with it if it that's why if again as much as a it's a controversial subject i know and it's but at the same time it's honestly having the concept of her being sexually assaulted would have worked a lot better 
mm. because of it. Because a lot of people then, will d- disagree that using that sexual know, like, that's, is like that's, a, what, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a it's controversial a, topic. No, 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 no it's not just controversial. It's just like it's a it's a real world application to PTSD. Yeah, it's a real world application to it's that's overused. Why I'm, I'm, I'm saying it could be overused. It is overused in in anime. It is overused and yeah, it's but what. That's what I'm trying to get at here, though, is that because of the poor writing, I am, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to say it, it is poor writing on the author's part to not be clear about what exactly happened. It just doesn't work. It just at all. And that makes Miku, her character is weaker because of it. And again, if they had not just simply brushed it off afterwards, and actually had like it didn't need like it didn't need to go like on like for like an episode like it didn't need to go on for ages but that's maybe an episode of two of like Miku at maybe acting differently towards Shido differently towards other male characters like she could have spent some time in the uh, in the ship for example I don't know but it would have worked better instead of her just like brushing it off and going oh Shido it's all good now that sort of thing like that's not how that works no uh, i mean so, i mean literally shiro saved her from a life threatening situation so maybe that type of a huge impact to her but... yeah but but still that does not that's not a good payoff that's the thing i mean Miku, i like, mean you can, i you mean can obviously say, I mean, you can say what... also because she does that stuff like i'll listen to your songs and stuff like that i mean yes that is yeah. so cliche that oh yeah i, I listen cli- that is I listen, cliche. I, I listen to your song i'll be there to support you i mean he's not lying though but i mean he, he's not lying he, yeah. he's, he, he'll he be there so so you can say that her heart slowly opens up to shido and around that point yeah and it's then, just and, and then, then also and then the I think, whole brush off thing like I think like, the whole brush off thing as well like afterwards she like goes and does a concert anyway and she got all the fans are there and like I'm sorry, what? How did she get this co- onset organized, for example? How the he- like, did she get in- back in contact with her producer? No, 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 she has, a, no she has a this? different agency. Different agency. Yeah, all right, it's different. a different agency, but still, like, you don't just brush off something like that. Yeah, uh, you... and that's why you say, like, you say that the, the sisters, yeah, sure, the, the two twin sisters, uh, in, at least in part two, their story arc is weak. But then you have Miku, who's even worse. I'm sorry. No, no, but- no. To be honest, I, I, I did a bit of rethinking regarding to Miku's arc. I mean, yes, it's weak, but it has some meaning to it. So I does, mean, the, yeah, the meaning does have the some- meaning to it is weak, but at least it's better than the Yamai sisters. That's what I meant. Mm. So okay. yeah, I like- mean, I mean, obviously, like I know going to the Miku's situation, I don't want to say much about it because, like, yes. She hates men. We need to know why. Oh yeah, because of her, of a her backstory to how she got harassed. She lost a singing voice, impact her life forever because she only rely on her singing to survive. And then Phantom shows up. She got the power to manipulate people with a voice. Have she just sound effect? And then she met Shido. Oh no, Shido will not have any kind of do much to help her. Oh, why not disguise it myself as Shuri? I mean, obviously, as a Daylight fan, I don't blame Shiori introduction because Shiori is actually a better version of Shido. Trust me, she she looks better. Shido looks better as a girl than a guy. So, <laughs> so yeah, Shido I, best girl. I mean, seriously though, like Sh- Shiori, like babysitting Sh- uh, Miku and stuff like that. I mean, sh- the thing is though, I could, I, I think I feel like Shiori could have asked Sh- Miku about her story early on. Mm. And then you know yeah. Shido could have tackled it and heads on about it, it like in the arc rather than just like Shido just talk ask Miku what is going on with the path. Shido could have done that like when in the during the mansion. I know I know you, you can say that Miku would not expose the truth because she, she you know she's still mm. very cautious around Shiori, especially with the fact that she found that Shiori can see spirit powers. But I feel like Shiori could have like asked Miku about her situation and they could have like used that as like a baseline. To go further with how to tackle Miku and stuff like that, then that is some mm. good good direction for the story. But you now he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna defeat you, Miku. I'm gonna have a sing off. Whoever wins the school festival I wins." That's like, okay. Uh, I mean, okay, sure, why not? 
<laughs> Why not? I mean, sure. Let, let's just go with the fan service and see uh, Shiori and make costume and stuff like that. And then we have a sing off. I mean, at least we get to see Toka singing. We get to see Yamai sister playing the yeah. instrument. That's the, you know, the sad thing is, we yeah. never really got a live concert for that for, for the past six years. Nah, uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, obviously, there's some credits to it too, where we get to see Shiori and Toka singing. Oh, by the way, Shiori has been voiced by a different voice actor than the one voicing Shido too. So, that's why um, when it comes to the singing part, I'd say, yeah, I mean, that's purely fan service, man. The whole cultural festival thing is purely fan service. You could have dealt with Miku's situation a lot easier than relying on the competition and stuff like that. Like, you know, relying, mm. like, you know, you, when you learn about Miku's past, you could have the baseline. You could have helped her, like, slowly open up to men and stuff like that. But they decided just to compete against her with the singing just to, just to show that there is a chance to beat an idol and stuff like that. I was like, okay, sure, why not? Let's have some fun with this arc, I guess. So, you know, seeing Chiori sing on stage Q&A, by the way, the song's got question uh, Q&A. Um, but mm. seeing them beat Miku in a, in a very overall way rather than a very specific way, like singing wise, it's like, so what's the, so you just need to do better in the bait shop. So that, it, that <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much damaged the whole concept of beating Miku in her singing competition than just uh, in general. So. I, I don't know. I I, I can't. I, I don't. It doesn't really sit well with me how they beat Miku and Miku accept de- cannot accept defeat and decide to manipulate everyone and to to fall yeah. into her charm. And that's where I really it really irritates me when Miku just man- use her power to manipulate everyone and target Shido. And because of her, it's you know, because shot, it's that Miku has is a, is a bad loser. That's the thing. Exactly like, right. She. She wants loser. to always win. She wants to always win, so she'll do anything in her power to do so. But that 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 is a bad message. Say, oh, you lose. Oh, let's find other ways to play, to play under to do the, to something under the table. Oh, let's use my singing voice. Yeah. Oh my God, dude, set the feet for God's sake, Miku. For God, that's why her character read. Really all for me i didn't really like her after, after that moment even if she redeemed herself from in season three it just didn't erase the fact how she with the shido i see him as like a, like am, a problem like i am interested to see what she's like in season four like i want to know i want to see what they do with her character in season four and maybe it oh, will there is a scene that she can you can say okay maybe she has some benefit of a doubt, I guess, but again, though, it's still not, like, it's still, it just didn't erase the fact what she did in season two for me, to be honest. Like, I cannot get my head, yeah. uh, head out of the fact how she asked everyone, all those zombie five people targeting Shido and say all those mean things to him, and then, oh no, darling, I'm so, I love you so much. I was like, uh, anyhow, anyway. Just before we move on, I just want to say, if you are, if, and you're listening to this and you are a fan of Miku, good on you. Like, nothing wrong with it. It's just, for me personally, she's not a good character. And she, which is a shame because I do honestly, that's the thing I want to get across. I do want to like her. I just think she's poorly written. And I think that comes down to the light novel. I'm sorry, like, I think the manic, the, the creator of the light novel stuffed her up a bit. Like he didn't like, it sounds like he didn't really know what to do with the character. Um, and again, that's from what I've gathered so far from what I've seen of, of the, from the past three seasons and the OVA slash movies. But yeah, I just think Miku for me is the worst character out of all of them. Um, minus the villain, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's just me. I think. Uh, yeah, and if you like, if you like the character, all good. It's okay. all good. Just yeah. Just to, just to expect me to like, they heard put her yeah, in my, ex- put her in yeah, my top five. Expect, like, don't, put, don't expect yeah, to put her in my top five. Or... I mean, yeah, she has exactly. she, she has big boobs. So what? I uh, Kurumi has big boobs. I got big boobs. Yeah. Her boobs. Well, Gami has big boobs. Uh, no, no, she has average size boobs. Um. Uh, so yeah, you can say like. Sure, Miku, if you're a fan of her, go ahead. I mean, defend her all you want. You, you won't change my mind how, how she, how, how, you know, her character developed in season, in season two. 
But I like I like her. I like the fact how she's supporting Shido for uh, for majority of season three. It's just that it it didn't really like hit me it as hard. Really, mind you, I can't remember. I think this may have been in season two, um, because uh, the the one thing that I didn't. This is one of the reasons why I didn't also like Miku, is because yeah, it was season two actually. Um, the when Toka gets inversed. Miku just fucking stands there doing fuck all throughout the entire thing and does nothing until the last like five minutes before they go, oh, maybe you should like use your voice or something to attack. It's like, oh yeah, I've got that ability, don't I? Like, you forgot? She, she did, but she just takes time to think about it. I was like, oh, bro, you could... I know, but that's could, the thing. You could have helped like, you. It, Dude, it, she was standing there when she, what she got yeah. stabbed by Ellen. That's what I meant. Like, like, yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, you could have... Like, if you're going to be in the room, do something. Like, I don't care if it doesn't work. Like, if, like, she uses this... Like, didn't she use the sound... Her sound voice and it like deflected or something. Like I mean, that. to to or give credit hit, though, she, hit the shield. I mean, to give like, credit though, she at did. Least she did something. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Uh, to give credit though, she did help Shido get to Toka though. That's yeah. All right. So she did help that with is that. True. But she did not. But help, once but she got into I, the room, fuck all. She done fuck all. To be honest, she did nothing like after that. Like until she realized, oh, maybe I should use my, you know, ability of sound to do something. I'm like, yeah. Instead of just standing there watching, you know, uh, Shido get stabbed, like he could have stepped in a lot earlier and maybe tried to stop that from happening. But mm. oh well, okay. And that's why for now Miku is seriously at the bottom of the list. But that's only because I, it's, it's again, if she was more better written, she would have been higher mm -hmm. on my list. But because of those, what I've already talked about. She's at the bottom of the list at the moment. And I'm, again, I really do want to like her. I just want to stress that. I really want to like her. And that's why I'm hoping if we, if we uh, in season four, and if we get a season five, she grows on me a lot more. Now that season part three is a ha has happened, she's definitely seems to have done a massive, she's started to grow in, se grow in season three. And hopefully she follows on from that. So hopefully season four, she's a lot better. Than she was in season three, and definitely from season two as well. Okay, but that's all I can think of what to say with Miku. To be honest, though, I can't think of anything else to add. To be honest, though, I mean, I pretty much said all I need to say about Miku. I mean, yes, she got her story to her while she did all that. I mean, at least we tackled that, I guess. At least we also, yeah, we also, 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 we also, tackle, also tackle don't forget, background. don't forget though, Miku, Miku's story also ties in. Miku's story also helps us to uh, really start to understand that there is a lot more going on with spirits with phantom in, in general like phantom going around mm -hmm. helping like in uh, girls in trouble like why how did phantom know about that so the thing about like about miku arc and the only thing i like about miku arc is that we get to see kurumi true personality kurumi really mm -hmm. went about to help shido out at least you can show that Mi Mi kurumi is not all about want to take shido out she has this soft side of her that she has can willing to support willing to forgive willing to like uh, showed that sort of side of her that we don't see from season uh, that, that's since season one so yeah i can say kurumi yeah. that's the only thing i really enjoy about she's the miku arc because we get to see this side of kurumi that we make her like her even more so yeah we didn't really see before and, so yeah that's the only really good thing and about her. miku liking shido in the end was just kind of like uh sure it's a harem series it, after all you expect it, that to happen yeah it's a harem series but it still felt forced as well so as again it's just it's because it's just so easily brushed off like her uh, this this her arc this really needed a bit more thoughts put into it let's say like if as a bit more if the author had just um put in a little bit more thought and effort into miku's backstory it would have worked a lot better and maybe it made her character a lot more likable when we first get introduced to her as it is, as it stands right now, though, no, because those problems have not been, well, let's just say, fixed at this stage. I'm just hoping again, season four fixes that, and I'll start to like her.
But anyway, let's move on from Miku. I have nothing else to say about her. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So season two in general is just like a good season. In my season opinion. two in general is a great follow up to season one, I think. Um, now, because again, season one was about introducing us to all these characters and then like the stories and all that. Season two is about almost kind of like developing the villains, like setting up the villains of the entire series and also again introducing us to Miku and the and the sisters but I do think overall season two is a lot more developed than season one um it's like again it's almost like even though it's only 10 episodes like it was like 10 episodes was enough to tell the story I think mm -hmm. that it needed to tell in season two anyway there's still a lot. Of, there's still a lot of content. Don't get me wrong, but again, so yeah, don't get me. Yeah, again, you can you say it, it was it was concise enough to like understand how the story progresses. So I'm not gonna complain much about that. It's just the fact that Kurumi at least mentioned something regarding to her next goal in mind. So yeah, let's. You can say then we move on to the movie. Apparently, the movie is considered canon. The Mayuri Judgment. Really, I. I've heard that I've heard mixed things on that. I've heard that um the you want to hear he was do you want to hear from the heart from a, a real fan perspective? It was a it was a I've heard that it's not it was a waste of money. Considered. It was a waste of money to be honest. It was it was uh, it, perhaps it could, if it's canon then okay. It could easily just be ignored and just move on to season three like nothing. But it's because of the movie they changed the whole way to start how we start season three. The way they restart season yeah, three. I heard about that. Yeah. The, the way they start season three is not how it's supposed to start in Light Novel. The Light Novel was supposed to start up with Miku and Shido talking with Katori regarding to her backstory, her past with Phantom. That's how, that's like the best way to start off season three. Mm. But no, they decided to have a wholesome way to start off season three, which I did not really like, by the way. So you can say Myri Judgment was a big mistake, in my opinion. Like, I mean, it's you, you introduce Myri. By the way, I need to give Myri, Myri some, some credit here because in the game she's very good, but she's very strong. But in the in the movie, she's been wasted in my opinion. She's been wasted as a character in the in the movie. She could have been such an amazing, well written character if they adapted the scene from the game. You get I guess I played the game Spirit Pledge. There's the, like an alternative ending to the movie. And that alternative ending okay. is a lot better than the fucking movie. And and that I mean yes, in the in the in the alternative ending she survives no, and no, like, no, no. joins up with No him, no so? it's not that it's it's nothing like that. That would be too cliche. Oh, okay. In the alternative ending, she get to experience the thing that she wants from Shido dating. Because all she's been doing was being a stalker. You think about it. All she was doing yeah. was a stalker, and then she just came out of nowhere and said, So Shido. I've witnessed what you've been doing. You pass. Oh no, my angel gone wild. Oh no, let's stop it. Like, bruh. You, Mayuri, that's your own powers. You help them out to fix it. Uh, Mayuri is also, such, Mayuri is, is such a wasted mm -hmm. character. Trust me when I say that. She's such a wasted. She has so much potential. Her power is actually really strong. I use her, I actually use her in the game, in Spirit Pledge, she's actually really good, very powerful. But in the movie, she looks like a, just a, like a wasted spirit, like she didn't really contribute much. All she was doing was a stalker, a, 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 a captive girl, a, what's, it, what's, what's the term you use when you've been held captive and stuff like that? Um, what's it? Uh, like, hostage, hostage! Hostage, yeah. Hostage. She was a she was she was a hostage most of the time, and it's just that she, she all she did was that she would kiss her. I was like, okay, sure. I do all right. I if I have to criticize this film a little bit, I do think, say, going on what you've been saying, I think it would have probably worked better if they made it a bit longer instead of having it an hour and twelve minutes. Maybe having a like the usual time of an hour and 30 and not just and that they would have like and not just that though you call you call the movie my yearly judgment 
at least give Mayuri where's the, ju the judgment? Give Mayuri no, the judgment comes when she talks to Shido after the talk of day and stuff like that. That's the judgment part. That was shit, by the way. Um you could have done you could have like at least give Mayuri 75% of the screen time. You it's her movie. Give her the moment yeah. to shine. And not just make her like the side character. Uh, like seriously, I was like so confused why the movie was made in the first place. Like I was sitting there when I first watched it, I was like, so where so how does Mayuri contribute to the story? Oh, she judged things. She experienced things that she experienced. Oh the and the one thing that really really pisses me off and i'm not sure it goes for everyone of course some people say oh my god that is so well execute executed but people with no taste to be honest with say that but the, the reason why i was more pissed off with like the last scene of the movie was when she just read Myuri's name out like like he knows her for a long time i was like dude you only know yeah. her. you only know her for like you only know her for like i don't know five minutes and you you scream her yeah. name out like you you know her for forever I mean, because people actually told me that oh, because Shido experienced all the memories Mayuri went through, of all goes back to Shido and stuff like that. Like, still though, I would much rather you I see Shido and Mayuri go on a date and just experience physically rather than memory like indirectly through the memories. Like that is just so annoying. Like, that is so badly written, and I was like, I was so Maybe angry. I was so angry that Maybe it would have worked better if they had actually introduced Maori like in in the second half of part two. Like no, that would not work. Maybe that, uh, Ma that Ma Maori judgment is something that's separate from the light like novel. It's nothing it's not it's, it's not tied to the light novel. Uh, okay. But it, oh, for, yeah, it's just but, from the game, isn't it? Yeah. No no no, it's not just the game. It it came out before the game. It my judgment was just made it just to like I don't know, please fans for some spin up movies. Like you saw for like a lot of shonen movies, like they made like spin up movies. It's something like that. It, 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 they try to go for that, right. they try to go for the concept, but it failed terribly. So, and they, they, they have the audacity to call it a canon movie. I was like, makes sense how they start off season three then, I guess. So, my early judgment is a waste, to be honest, because not only because my early never really got the, a lot of time to shine. She was just being a, like a hostage most of the time. Didn't really like make me like her a lot. The, the reason why I like her now because a lot because of because I use her in the game. She's a lot more useful in the game. So yeah, I like how the on Mal the source list for uh, Mary Judgment is the says light novel when it really should probably oh, say they say that they, they say that because they, they the light novel the author actually say oh shit what have I done oh well might as well. Write a separate, separate light novel just to like tackle the inner in the monologue of how my Myri judgment, how Myri thinks through the situation. It's like you, we, all that money, all that fucking money invested to the movie could have went to the fucking season three. Uh, yes, actually, you're right about that. Oh my god! So. So anyone that liked Myri judgment, uh, fair play for you guys. I don't, I, I won't, I won't say I, I hate it. I just say I could have done a bit better if they adapted the game version of it. The game version has a better ending than the movie itself. And just, yeah, so my judgment, I gave it like I think I, was, I, I think I gave it like a seven or six because it was just like a waste of a waste of budget to be honest. I gave it an, I gave it an eight. Uh, that's because you know I haven't played the games and like no, even before the game I gave I it a seven. It. Even before the game, I gave it a seven. So yeah, my as a hardcore fan myself, it was just a waste of budget. Like the movie was just like basically the the whole season one, season two. She'd have gone on a date with the spirits and stuff like that. I was like, could have could you think of something more world ending and stuff like that? I mean, I mean, I I would love it. I was actually I would love it if they actually adapted the the movie actually adapted the the like the visual novel games. Like for example, the fir the first version, the first visual novel game, Rene, uh, the Rene one, which is like, I trust me, it has a better, much better written story than the actual Maya Judgment one. The like the visual novel, okay. the visual novel has a, a way better spin off story than the Maya Judgment. So I I would love it if they if they want to adapt a movie for that instead, like a spin off movie for that instead, than the whole Maya thing. I was like. 
who, who um, the the whole the whole franchise was fucked after the Mario Judgment. In my opinion, it was all fucked up because of the Mario Judgment. So mm, all right. So yeah, I mean, oh. of, uh, so that, you, anything you say about Mario Judgment, all I have is criticism for the movie. To be honest. Fair enough. Shall I move on to season three? I mean, before we move on to season three, the, the two OVAs. The first OVA was like, what, what the fuck was that all about? The, the OVA two has more meaning, has more meaning to the story because OVA two actually ties to the Day Bullet in some ways or form. So is is that the uh, Kurumi Star Festival one? Yeah. You mean that OVA? Yeah. 10 out of yeah. 10. That was a good OVA. E- easily 10 out of 10. That was for, a good OVA. Easily 10 out of 10 for me because not only is Kurumi, but also because her character, again, beautifully well, beautifully written. Because we get to see this side of Kurumi that we die. We don't see before. We, we don't yeah. see before. Like, no, we've seen a bit of it in season two and one, but we don't see this to this extent. We saw how much Kurumi. Yeah, to this extent. We, yeah. we really get to see this sort of Kurumi that we. You say, oh my god, she's a, like a normal girl now. And of course, that what you saw in the OVA 2 for Kurumi Star Festival. Here's, uh, you do my bit of spoiler. Yeah, go ahead. That is her real personality. That is what Kurumi well, is. It's, what, it's one of her clones. No, so no, yeah, no. That, that, that is what Kurumi really was like before she became a spirit. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, I get you now. So right. what we saw is basically the re- the real Kurumi, in, uh, and the what we saw in Day Alive is just like what she had to do in order to gain results. So, yeah, and of course, the whole OV thing ties to their bullet because the, what we saw in their in OV two has some meaning to their bullet. So again, though it well, uh, I so well, just, maybe one day I'll get a bullet, but so yeah, um, just just wait till then, man. Just wait till then. So. Anything you want to say for the OBAs, Oliver? Uh, I'm just trying to remember what happened in each. I know I remember uh, Creamy Star Festival more than the date to date one. I think date to date one was just them going on like different dates. Like he was just going around dating all of them. I just saw like each individual one, I think it was. Um, But that one wasn't really like. Like, it was good, but got, thinking back on it, like, it's not that good. Um, Creamy Star Festival was adorable because you get to, again, as you said, like, we get to see a, a side to Creamy. We Yes, we kind of have seen before, but kind of have not. Um, and it sort of has, like, a little bit of a downer ending as well because, like, she, Creamy finishes up this date and then the other Creamy, like, the main one, I guess you could call it, um, shows up and like, oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. You've been like being a naughty girl, essentially, and playing around. And like, so she ends up like shooting her herself. Um, when, but saying that, when that happens, doesn't she like reclaim those memories or something like that? Or does she get those memories back after she does shooting? It does. Yeah, so she would sort of got she sort of would have gotten those memories of the date then, of spending the day with uh, Shido then. So I guess, but it's still kind of sad as well because like you get to because this like uh, version of Kurumi is like very different to as you said she's this the one before she became essentially a spirit. So it's kind. Of, in a way, it's kind of sad. Well, no, that it, she gets... it, it's actually the clone that ki- got killed off in season one too. But you know, because she reverted back to her original self because of what happened, uh, because she said that things to her in season one. So yeah, that's I need to get that across before people say, "Oh my god, that is not the crew me that we know." But that's the crew, that's the clone that we saw from season one that got reverted back to her old self because of what she said to her. So that's all I need to clarify. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's yeah, move on. That, I mean, let's move on to season three. Our, our, our podcast is over two hours already, which is wow. Yeah, wow. So, content. Wow, yeah, content. So, content. So yeah, here, here we go. Season three, the like, most. I still the gave, most. I still, here's I, the thing. Before I get started, the most controversial season that got many yeah, fans like, bitching still, about it. That like, got many fans bitching about I, it. I still want to point out that yeah, the anime. I will say the animation in Dead Alive Three, of course, is 
horrendous. It's really bad. But I still really enjoyed the... I got past the how bad the animation was and just focused on the story itself and what was being portrayed and shown in season three. And for that reason, I still gave it an eight out of ten. But saying that, I will say, yeah, the animation is really bad. I'm, Oliver, I, I have to fall for that. Oliver, what's, so. what's your number one favorite anime? Let me just ask you this. My number one favorite anime? Ooh. That's a hard one. Um, good question. I'm not sure because I've watched a lot of anime now, and you don't have like a solid favorite, like anything. Because no, I... I don't actually, not anymore. Like I, I guess I could possibly say favorite franchise is probably maybe like, say like Monogatari. Um, imagine, but... imagine a Monogatari series. Got adapted by JC Staff. That is how bad it is. Yeah. Imagine like, you, you, imagine the whole head to the whole animation you see in Shaft done for their life, all got taken away by and being adapted by I don't know like a JC Staff. No, not the worst example. JC Staff is like an is like uh the worst studio ever done uh, done dirty to Daisy day Life. It is like. Basically, the uh, Modern Galaxy series being adapted by uh, what's the studio? What's it called again? Um, studio Passion, something like that. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's just so bad. So it was so bad. That, just, like you, just, I just have to wonder what happened to JC Staff because back in the day, they were like yeah, I, 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 bring out hit yeah, after hit after hit. I, I'm pretty sure. They, I'm pretty sure they outsourced it. They outsourced it. Uh, they outsourced it. Yeah. There's no way. Because look at their work on um, Railgun compared to what they work on their life. Yeah. So you can see the difference in like, like yeah. dedication to the... Hey, budget. look at Food Wars. Like, yes, Food Wars also went bad. But seasons... You can still argue seasons one and maybe two are still really good animation-wise. But... So yeah, you it's can, like as so they went, basically JC as they went along, like undirty. over the years, they got worse. They got really bad, like later on, and now like they just suck. In fact, uh, I mean, he, he, he's a, he's Eden a, Zero. He, they are doing they are doing Eden Zero, and that hasn't been that bad actually. Dude, Eden Zero had animation. An could, I wish Eden Zero animation could have been their live animation. Yeah, like Eden Zero, like their adapt, adaptation of Eden Zero has been on point like i've read the manga as you know it's been really good oh there's my phone i'm going to ignore that because i'm busy at the moment they can leave a message if it's important i will call them back is there a doctor <laughs> i don't know actually oh, okay um maybe it's your vaccine call <laughs> uh they've left a message so it's all good so i'll see what it is later all right so so, so yeah line, you, yeah I basically jc staff what you saw in eden zero i was like oh my god this animation could have been there alive like why did they not go for this oh yeah they could have been outsourced it to another another fucking minor studio and they have the name on it i was like oh my god why did it did their life season three, three like that season three was supposed to be the most I just say big season because of the origami arc. I mean, don't get me wrong, the origami arc is executed quite well, in my opinion. Mm. The Natsumi arc was just like somewhat done okay. It did it, it, it cut out a lot of love content, but they, at least they got the message straight with Natsumi as a character and how she led to this point, of course. But origami arc is where they've done quite well with it because we can we get to see the side of origami we don't we've been dying to see since season one. Origami get to like get her revenge, but she failed to do so. She resorts to using the very thing that she she wants to destroy, her power. Yeah. But then she resorts to time travel because that's the only thing she can do now. And because of this whole time yeah. paradox thing, we led to this sort of catastrophe event where she had to go back in time. So we have this whole Avenger thing again. So adventure end game thing. So and she, yeah, she ends up realizing that. And guess what? She was who, the one. And guess who's the hero of the day? Rumi, my girl, Rumi. the hero yeah. of the day. 
we, if Kuri wasn't there, there is no day alive anymore. The origami would destroy yeah. the whole world. So basically, Kurumi saved the day. You have to think about it. So Kurumi sent Chiro back in time, saved Origami, created a time paradox where she has a split personality. Oh no, she she she's not she the world's not saved yet. Oh yeah, let's kiss Origami, and that is pretty much over. Then we then then we have the final episode where we should never been adapted to be honest. They should have just make a spin off. Yeah, they could have just. They should have just made it eleven episodes again. No, no, no. They should have just. They should have done this. They should have just made a spin-off final episode. They, there's no such thing as an eleven episode season. I mean, there is, but it's very rare, and they it, it, and no studio wants to have this like a, the the one one number. So, so that's why I would say okay. Well, they, they either Dead Alive Two was Dead Alive Two was two was eleven ten, episodes. Tell, no, ten episodes. OVA does not count. Well, OVA does not count. Uh, Mm, okay. So, okay. so you can say not only season three did not. The thing about season one, season two, they actually add in some extra scenes from the light novel, the BD version. Season three adds absolutely bullshit nothing. They add nothing. Yeah. Oh, okay. They add nothing yeah, from I mean, the light because novel. Because that's the thing. When I first started reacting to Dead Alive, like I started just watching it on like Anime Lab, and then like people told me, you know, you should actually download and watch it through the, the blu-ray ver the bd version yeah. because they've added extra stuff in that yeah so that's what i switched over to that and yeah but but, part but, three but yeah part season three, three season three yeah. did fuck all they did not even add any extra scene for the light novel which can contribute to the story even better or should I say the wholesomeness of the story even better but also the fact that you know they did not even have an ova for after season three yeah like Bruh, season one season two had an OVA. Why can't you give an OVA for season three? Oh yeah, because you guys uh, fucked it up, and they and no one and and you can't even bother put in an OVA. At least we got a day of bullet announced. Like, I like seriously, like the final episode. Like, also also Kawaii crew, if you're watching this, sorry, I'm very 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 sorry, but when you say you you like the final episode. I really I was like, I, I was like disgusted by that. How, why would you ever say the final episode was good? It was beyond horrible. It was disgusting. It was, it was not only the, it didn't really get the story straight. It, it was just purely butchered terribly. The, there is like, they cut out the stuff that could easily tie to season four. Like, I don't know how they're going to start season four now. Because of how they dealt with season, the final episode of Volume 13. But they put the whole of Volume 13 into one 24 episode. And to make things worse, they add in the opening and the ending. To, uh, well, they add in the opening into the, the episode. That, which could easily be cut out for more stuff to add in. So, yeah. So, the final episode was just so bad that many fans were complaining on the social media. Like me, of course. And not just that, it just ruins the story in general. Like, Kotori... Had some amazing development in season, volume thirteen. Oh no, we cut that out because that's boost, that's just boring. I think that's important. We oh no, we uh, they, they cut out. They uh, they just messed up the whole story. Kurumi was never meant to be in the situation with the spirit and Shido. She was supposed to be somewhere else. Oh no, let's add her in because fan would see her helping Shido out. Bullshit. And then there's one major major plot point in in volume thirteen that could. Again, contribute to this new season. Oh, let's just take that out of the story now. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely furious with the final episode. Like, that, that was the reason why I gave it a seven. I could, I could give season three. I could like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of their life. I could give it an eight for season three. I can't. I absolutely can't because of what I did with the final episode. So. Origami arc, yes, it's, it's done okay. Um, but Anatomy arc was good. At least we get to see Natomi in action. Uh, origami arc was was the only reason why I could easily give it an eight if it, if the final episode never existed, because like Origami character really shine in the Origami arc. So, oh yeah, yeah. Origami like really. Uh, Oliver, made Oliver, that, Oliver, Oliver that before season. before you before we get into that, just let me just finish this off. Season three. Oh, that's people, all I was going to say, actually. People, people say it was the best season. They never read a light novel. 
trust me, anime, anime, even uh, hopefully, even anime only felt something was missing from the from the from season three. Like, bruh, season three was so badly done that season four would never could never actually happen. Actually, I actually feared season four never happen because of what they did with season three. But thank God they pushed further with season four, so I'm very happy with that. So the only good thing about season three is the origami arc. Natsumi arc was just like you can just forget about it. It's just like there to be honest. But origami arc is where the meat of the season. But origami, like origami, what did this kill Kotori? Oh, surprise, surprise! I'm the one that killed my own parents. Oh my god, that is a plot twist. That is like the biggest plot twist of the whole franchise, in my opinion. So, oh, I agree with okay, that. Okay, so. That I have my save for season three already. Oliver, your turn. Ah. Well, I honestly agree with. I think probably the best part of season three <sighs> was the origami arc. Like when I realized, that, oh, we're doing the time travel paradox uh, story. I was just. I remember going like, "All right, let's do this. Let's just. I'm. I'm. I'm in. I love this sort of. I love this story arc. I like the idea of." time travel and how is it going to play out sort of thing and i thought it was done really well that arc um and seeing like origami come to re like come to the realization that holy shit like i'm the one that essentially killed my parents because i sent myself i saw myself essentially kill my parents so like, yeah that that was really well done and that the way that she realizes this it's just so powerful i think and it's like both powerful and sad because like the idea of and i understand why like afterwards when she comes back to the present why she's so broken and shido has to be the one to like break her out of it it's because seeing like she was, the, she was beyond you, saving. She, you can see from her eyes. Yeah, she, she was beyond she was saving. Totally dead. She was totally gone because she was dead. She of that realization of, oh. like, I'm the one that killed my parents. Yeah, like she's beyond. That's the she, paradox. She was beyond gone, man. There's no way the kids can save her. So that's why she all had to resort to time travel because Origami just her heart just shattered basically from the inside. She yeah. she couldn't really come back anymore. The origami that we know is dead. It's just that it, it takes yeah. a bit of time traveling to fix that. So, yeah. So yeah. yeah so was... so that that uh, the one thing that I give credit for for this is that if they were actually the one that animated that scene, it's the eyes. Origami eyes when she yeah. was dead. That was just so well executed. That shows yeah. that she's dead. She's long gone now. She can't. She's beyond saving. Yeah. So that is the old, that's the one thing that I like about JC that they did for season three is that they executed the scene with origami inverted. The devil origami they done so well. So that's I'll give credit for that. Everything else, bullshit. Yeah, fair enough. What was the uh, there was the origami arc in in season three? What was the other arc of season three? Remind me what that was again. Was that just the origami arc? Not to me, arc and origami. Just, just the not to me, arc and origami arc. That's like the two main arc in season three. Natsumi arc. That was the other one. Yeah, the Natsu That's it. The Natsumi arc. That the I actually enjoyed the Natsumi arc as well. I was like, so, it was a bit was silly so. at times. Well, it was. It was. I enjoyed it because it was silly. Like, um, the idea of you know making them children and like. Sure. Oh yeah, that was a fun. That was fun. Of... That was fun. That was fun. That was yeah. fun. That was fun. Yeah, but, like I liked how they played with that. That was good. Um, the idea of you know slowly like here's some photos of everyone. One of these is a fake. I've already taken the like I've taken the original girl and I, I I'm now her. Which one is it? I love that idea. That mystery aspect of it and she slowly like takes them one by one i thought that was really well done honestly no so, to be honest though um if it's been adapted by the previous studio though the whole dating thing with the girls could have been more than two episodes in my opinion though 
I mean, the whole, I mean, yes, you can say I would love to see some scenes being adapted, but they never did. But it's just the fact that the whole mystery aspect, who's the Natsu, who's Natsumi amongst the characters. I mean, if you actually, under, it, it basically is a test of how much you, uh, you remember the characters, how much you understand the history of Shido. And to me, mm. to me though, I, I, re I realized that there's something going on with one of the characters. And yes, we all know Yoshinon. How did Yoshinon did all that in that in that very episode? So that you guys yeah. are, you guys are what Yoshinon did um, with the door and stuff like that. I was like, hmm, yeah, I think I can see who's the who Natsumi could be. So that's so if you like really understand the character, then you then you can pretty much like find out who Natsumi really is. So basically, the, what the author did was to just to test how much the fan understands the characters. And how much they can like yeah. really stick the minor things about them. So yeah, it's also really interesting to see that like sh it shows that Shido doesn't really understand the girls either because he couldn't pick out who was the real like who was who. So like he ran um, I can't remember which sister it was. It was either Kagura or Yuzuru, but and he was dating them like. I think the I think the audience us picked up that okay, that's obviously Natsumi because she's acting really odd as let's say Yuzuru, but Shido doesn't pick up on that at all. Like it just shows that he doesn't really know them that well after all this time. It just feels a bit odd to me that he he didn't pick it up on at Anyway, he did though in the end. Know. Though he in the end though, with, with... He, he did pick it up. He, and yeah, he, he picked it up. Okay, on, okay, okay. Well, now I remember something. This is where many Miku fans come at me for this because like I, how much I bitch over Miku. Miku was the one that gave Shido the idea regarding to object and stuff like that. You think about it. Yeah, yeah. It was Miku that helped Shido out. So people say, "Oh, look, Miku saved the day. Happy now." I say. Yeah, that could be anyone to be honest. But yeah, Miku saved the day. So yeah, I do, I have to give Miku some credit for that scene right there. He helped yeah. Shido to think outside the box with that whole object thing, and then come up with Yoshinon being the real culprit. So wow, fair play, Miku. Fair play, save the day. You could have been a bit, much better character in season two, but yeah, you can say. Then we move on to the. Another part of the Natsumi arc, the uh, where she really shows her character, where she see why why she is what she is. So she has some yeah. self image problem, and she yeah, she... She definitely self image problems. Like she she prefers to be like a busty older older lady than um, or not older lady, but you know like someone who's like in their maybe late teens, early twenties. Then because it turns out like she's only like. Her actual appearance is that of like a little girl. Mm -hmm. So, but I can understand why she has, you know, image problems, but still a bit odd, to say the least. Mm -hmm. But regarding to, regarding to Natsumi arc though, you can say, it also ties to the question, what happened to her in the past? Did she, was she human? Was she the spirit? If she was uh, if she was human, like what caused her to have self image problem? Did she got abused or something like that? So yeah, you can say you can also tie into that too. So I mean, mm. not, the reason why Natsumi um, is is a much well, um, was introduced because of her character design. Look at that beautiful design, man. Look at Mayuri. She could have been such a beautiful girl <laughs> if, it, if it was done so much better. Yeah. Like this is the game. This is like an anniversary, by the way, today, by the way. So, what's the uh, anniversary today? The game, the game anniversary. Of the game, oh, okay. So I've been playing. I've been playing the game. To be honest, my Natsumi is a very, I just how to put it though, um, good usable character in the game. But in my uh, Mayuri is is so much better in the game in, in the anime itself. To be honest, so yeah, go back to Natsumi though. She her powers can be better. She her power is actually going to be very useful in season four. She's going to have a huge contribution. Oh, yeah. She's going to have a huge contribution in season four. 
when he, when he comes well, to Well, if Natsumi that. still has the power to become anyone she wants, no, no, that's definitely no, it's not, it's not. It's not that she becomes someone. It's, it's her other skill that she did. It's a, her other mm. skill, which is imitation. Her, the thing about Natsumi is not her transformation. That is, is basically what sells her. It's her imitation. She ever she gets to mm. imitate other people's personality, how she how they do stuff. Let's do skills like, and stuff like that. Saying so, that. Does she still need like to do that though? Doesn't she still need to like kidnap the original host? No, no, she just needs to observe them. Observe them. Oh, okay. You just need to observe them. Just, but then if that if that's the case, she also ended up of um of, um taking on the form of like some of the other students and the teacher from the school. She could have. Um, she could have, but she didn't. Didn't she? Hang on, but... If I, uh, she did I, I remember she had the photos of the, the girls, as the some of the female students in the school and the teacher. And once everything was undone, didn't she also return them as well because they, she had taken them? I thought she had. She sneakily took a picture of them. Okay, I must have must be remembering wrong because I thought she had at the very least had taken the teacher. Um, yeah, she had. I guess she did. She did. She did. She did take the teacher. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I thought she did take the, the teacher as well. Um, she did. And then it's, it's just that. Uh, what? Uh, what can I say? She really was being sneaky with this. She she think this through. She you think she really like. Thought the plan through to how to um, make sure life miserable, but again though, we all can, we all say that Natsumi didn't uh, fail on her job. So happy days, everyone. Natsumi is, uh, Natsumi got exposed. Now we move on. Yeah. So and then we yeah. and then you can say the origami arc. We pretty much said all we need to say. This is where yeah, we already said everything we needed for the origami arc. That was just probably honest. I, I will say the origami arc was a lot better than the Natsumi arc in terms of. Pre uh, how, oh, how, oh hell yeah! Is the is the, is the is the only arc yeah. that that we care, I look forward to in the season three. That's me. Arc. I just wish it could have been over quickly. So, yeah, you can say I was. Well, if it was done, I reckon you won't be saying that if it was adapted by a different studio. Yeah, and it was done. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's JC step. I wanted it to be done quickly so that we can get to the meat of the season three, where the real story, yeah, fair enough. where the real story real comes story. in. Kicks and in. also because we get to see another former crew me, which you know the longer hair version one. So, yeah. any longer hair, uh, yeah, the one from the past. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically Shido saved the day. She kissed kiss Origami, but also Origami has a split personality in her, which Oganda will play a massive part in season four, which we'll, we'll see later. Yes. Where she, where she, that other side of personality will play, will contribute to the story really well. Um, but then again, the final episode, I, re I pretty much ranted already. I mean, I could easily... Yeah, you've already ranted on that. I, yeah, I, 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 no I, need to bring that I, up again. I pretty much already... I can easily make a video about it too, but you can say... <laughs> season 3, yeah, it is there. It's, it's two years ago. It's, uh, it's a terrible... It's a, one of the weakest seasons, in my opinion. Uh, season 2 was at least better. Well, it was at least better season 2 was a lot better than Season 3, yeah. Season I one, think season one will always be a masterpiece for me because it has many lures that you just look overlooked it and you say, oh, that makes sense now. So season one will always be my favorite. Also because of better animation too. So yeah. yeah so yeah. so but, well, with that said though, Day Alive season four coming out in the fourth season. Hopefully comes out in the fourth season. Hopefully. Fingers yeah, fingers crossed. Because I'm, I'm been waiting for a fucking PV. For a little while now, we're at the August period. They better release a PV. If they if they do release any PV leading up to the the season four, then I have a feeling they could actually delay it to the next to uh, next year. Next year, yeah. And because in fact, it's another different so again, another studio, Geek Studio, Geek, so toys. Geek toys. They did. Um, they did. Uh, I, they did quite a good. I've seen. Blunderer. I've seen one of their animes so far, and that's the um, hentai one, right? The harem one. Yeah, the hentai yeah, one. Yeah, the 
Um, yeah, I the, want, uh, I want, Hansuki. Yeah, they, the Hansuki one. They, they adapted the Day of Bullet. They did quite a good job with the character design in some ways or form. I'm saying that like a robot because I'm still critical about some aspect of the fight scenes, but he can say I have some confidence in Geek Toys than JC staff, so looking forward to I it. Think it I, I do think Geek Toys will definitely do a better job animating it over JC stuff. I mean, Geek I, do, I, mean, I do reckon that's I mean, going to be the case. I mean, Geek Show have nothing really to work for, to be honest. So they are they are focusing purely on their lives right now. So hopefully, yeah, we, we get to see a PV. There's nothing else that they need. Yeah, hopefully the, we get to see a PV soon. The, I judge. Also I judge. A, I judge a, things a based on. I judge. I would judge it based on what I can see from the PV, which I'm hoping to be next yeah. month or coming out next month. Like there is no code. Yeah, there's, 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 there's no Kodokawa events, so it could appear anytime soon now. So it could even appear today, if, by the time we record this video. So, yeah, thing about PV, um, the PV just came out of nowhere sometimes. But anyhow, you can say I'm looking forward to season four because there is some key event in season four that will really tackle the lore of their life. And I'm not gonna say because it's spoiler, but you can say there is two spirits that will that one will. Will, will raise the question for the whole um, situation with re regard to their life. And two, you will see this character. This character will be annoying, but she has a reason to be annoying, and she will help this certain character to really expose well, herself. Expose herself. So yeah. look, since how annoying are we going to be talking here? Because again, we've already have had you know Miku being really annoying. And also, there's saying that there's also West. Oh, oh, tr so, oh, trust me, trust me, trust me. This <laughs> this girl will it'll be equivalent to how Miku dealt with this. Will uh, be annoying that with season two. Like uh, the way the her powers though, uh, okay. her, her power actually has a strong detrimental effect to the to Shido. Okay. So I'll leave All it to right. that. But with that said though, well, I think with that said though, I, I think we can. With that said though, um. What is your anticipation for season four? Uh, I'm hyped for it. I'm a little bit, I will say again, like with you, I'm a bit, let's say, wary because of what happened, but that's only because of JC stuff and the animation with that. So I'm hoping, again, different studio, Geek Toys, they're a brand new studio. Like, sure, they've been around for a couple of years now. But they're still relatively new. They haven't really ad adapted anything major yet. This is their first major set piece, so to speak. So, if this... this I reckon, in terms of Geek Toys, in terms of Dead or Alive 4, this will either make them or break them. It will either do... Because if it's a, a success, if the animation is great, if they adapt the story on the light novels like better than JC stuff did that will break that will make them but if they cut corners if the animation is even worse than JC stuff on level of JC stuff and live 3 wise it will break them and it will destroy them as a studio that's what i think because again this is their first real major property that they're going to be adapting from and yeah it it can go either way at this point so until we see like a pv and uh see what it's going to be like animation wise and story wise that could be a major factor in it we so shall, we shall so say saying all that we shall say so what so what i'm trying to what I'm saying here to wrap up is again, I because I liked Dead, Dead Alive, I've liked it so far. I'm hyped for season four, but at the same time, because it's a brand new studio, I am wary but optimistic about what's going to happen with it. That's my final thoughts on Dead Alive Four. I cannot say much until I see the PVs, to be honest. So yeah. So yeah. You can so for anyone in my channel, for anyone in my channel, of course, um, you can expect me to do a, a like a, a PV reaction and a, a, for the first time in my channel, a PV analysis. 
So looking forward to that Ooh. analysis. And yes, that would be some spoiler because I can add some stuff from the light novel, but expect a PV analysis where I can dive really into what I see from the PV and how to expect from season four. PV is always there to allow it to have anticipation for season four. Don't just not watch the PV and expect it to be good for the upcoming season. So yeah. So without that, with that said, though, looking forward to waiting for the PV, which I'm still dying to wait for, for which I'm still waiting for. One, Kolokawa, get your acts together. So, <laughs> so yeah, mo- okay, let's end this podcast. I know it's two yeah. hours and a half, which is content, yeah. guys. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Th- uh, yeah. To wrap up, thank you so- very much for listening to our Data Alive podcast uh, we honestly didn't expect it to be this long we expected it to hey, be just a short hey this is what happened when you have a hard <laughs> this is what happened when you have a hardcore fan versus a newbie a newbie yeah so uh, yeah yeah let's just say we appreciate yeah we appreciate you listening to our ramblings on of uh data mm-hmm. live uh look forward to in the future look forward to both our reactions mm-hmm. both myself and mad lads reactions to data live 4 we hope we won't be disappointed. We hope you guys won't be disappointed. Um, let me know. Let us know your thoughts of our commentary in the description, in the comments. Um, I'm sure Mad Lad will send me a copy of this uh, podcast so I can put it on my channel. Um, um, you can just, you can, ju- you can just like um, download it in my on YouTube. Yeah, I can just, I can probably just download it as well. I might do that. But yeah, I think that's all I can really say. So. Yeah, I'll let Mad Lad uh, wrap up. So thank you, for li- thank you so much for listening. I know this is a long podcast, but don't worry, guys. I put a, I put the timestamp to some of the stuff we talk about in the com- in the description below. So make sure you guys just, I mean, of, of course you guys would just go to it anyways. But yeah, make sure you guys just leave the like button so that you can get the algorithm going. Obviously, I don't think people would sit through two hour and a half. No one ever would ever do yeah. that. So thank you so much for yeah. listening. And ho- hopefully we can do to uh, do this again for season four when it comes out next for next season. And yeah, thank you for listening. Smash the like button and make sure you guys subscribe to his channel and my channel because we are already guaranteed to be reacting to season four. So looking forward to that. If it does not get delayed, of course. So yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. And this is Mad Lad and this is Oliver and I will see you next time. All right. <laughs>